and junk drawer. Hello. Hi. It worked. Welcome back. I have a full face. Oh my god, it's amazing. But I think it's thinner on this camera. You look very gaunt. Oh, you good. You look like the Skeletor version <laughs> of I, one Joshua Delgado. Man! I, mean, well, I need that camera is slimming. Yeah. Well, I ran out of food, so I haven't eaten in a week. So that makes sense. <laughs> well, uh, on that note, welcome to Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. We are back with another episode of fun goodness for you. Uh, probably, maybe not. I don't know. Um, the writers didn't tell me this week. First off, shout outs. Let's start with Joshua Delgado. You got anybody to shout out, buddy? Uh, exercise induced asthma, keeping me slow since 1992. Whoop, whoop. But I ran three miles today, so that's still Respect. progress. Heck yeah. What about you, Dice Daddy? What you got? Hi, yeah. Uh, I have a few things. <clears throat> uh, just wanted to shout out all the wonderful things that you can do on Roll20. We're not sponsored by them, but I think they're a great platform, uh, and I'm not biased about that. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over anything that you've seen or you see. Uh, I wanted to shout out Forgotten Adventures for our Pinterest board and our items board. Mm -hmm. uh, Printable Heroes for our uh, figure for Rosalie. Uh, Victor Ned Nedelchev? Nedelchev. Victor Nedelchev. For He's mad now. Some of the, the pieces. And... Uh, Paizo, which um, Paizo worked with my favorite David Hemingway for a few maps that I had procured. And if we get to it, we get to it. <laughs> um, so just wanted to shout those people out. Really awesome, high quality stuff for a really, really good price. Wow, your friends. Wow, your mom. Wow, your dad. Maybe don't disappoint your dad and show him these cool maps. Ugh, too late for that. But he'd have to come back. Tag. That's the tagline. <laughs> That's the tagline for the maps. Look at these maps. Don't disappoint your dad. Maps. Um, <laughs> the little doodles, Mike Spillane, what you got? Damn. Um, wow. I didn't know that you are going to be that rude. Um, <laughs> cool. Appreciate it. Uh, Mike's sure rap guys... name is Lil Doodles. Yeah. <laughs> Coming straight, straight out of the NPR. What's good? 727. Rise up. Um, <laughs> I hate everything about who I am. <laughs> Uh, make sure you're following us on uh, Instagram at the junk drawer show uh, and subscribe to us. Uh, the junk drawer show on YouTube. We have some new content that we're always working on. Uh, Dice daddy, Justin and Josh uh, have been working on a, uh, uh, a recreation and like recollection series on uh, Justin's senior film project. Uh, so that's going to be something cool that we have on the horizon. Uh, me and Pat have been working on some NFL podcasts. If any of you guys are sports fans out there, uh, and we might end up working on uh, some some other content here in the future since we're still in uh, quarantine for God knows how long. Uh, but since you're here on Twitch, make sure you follow us on Twitch. And if you actually like us, subscribe so that way we can uh, update Josh's graphics card so that way we look prettier. It's not going to help. It's actually probably going to be worse. We're better as blobs. Uh, the camera adds 300 pounds, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Unless you have Josh's camera. Josh, what camera is that? <laughs> the same one. It's just going through <laughs> Firefox instead of Chrome. Also, I have not eaten in a week. <laughs> so I've eaten. Don't, don't call of, anyone. Of, Sounds like a you problem. That. <laughs> Carlos, got any shout outs for us tonight? Yeah, I'll just uh, shout out my usual every week. I'm going to shout out to Random Encounter Productions. Uh, they are still doing their stream. Uh, String Apocalypse. They've been doing it for now for what six weeks? I think we're at now. I About something that. like that. What are Sounds days? Forty something days. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, so go ahead, check them out on Twitch. They are Random Encounter Prod P R O D. Uh, you can check them out on Instagram and YouTube as well at Random Encounter Productions. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna shout out again uh, this lovely company for my lovely dice tray that I was supposed to send back last week and I didn't because life got in the way. Uh, Dan, if you're watching this, which you're not, but if you are, I'm sorry that I told you I was going to send it today and I didn't because work. But the name of the company is... I forgot. Hold on. Fired. Wow. On the box. 
Great endorsement. Fired. It's called Fired. Green Fox Woodworking. Um, they have an Etsy shop. It's awesome. It's great. This is full leather. So, you know, animal stuff or whatever, if you care about that. I don't, but, like, you might. Um, check them out. It's really quality product. And, uh, like I said last week, the customer service has, like, honestly been great. I just haven't been able to get to the post office because why would I do that right now? To, to mail back the box. Yeah, but, like, yeah, disease. Dummy. Oh, no, that's fake. That's a hoax. We all know that, right? It, there, it's caused by 5G towers, and it's a way for the government to take over and change the batteries in the birds. Birds aren't real. <laughs> Look, man, all I know is I shotgunned a whole bleach Clorox bottle, and my brain no work, no good. <laughs> but I ain't got the COVID. But I ain't got COVID, baby. I ain't got COVID, and my insides are about as wide as my outsides, so... The cleansing <laughs> of the inside. Hooray beer. But yeah, uh, so that's that's all I really have. Um, also, hi, Mom. I don't know why, but... Hi. What's up, Moms? Uh, shout out now, to the Moms. Mother's Day is coming up. Cheers, right here. Up in camera. Guys, cheers. Also, to cheers, Winston, cheers to I want to shout Winston out. Winston oh, is, yeah. a, is the best boy in the whole wide world. Um, yeah, he yeah. is. He's, he's pretty sweet. He's pretty sweet. Uh, so, with all of that being said... Dice Daddy, whenever you're ready. <clears throat> okay. Last we uh, we all convened and joined, you had taken the different orphans um, uh, from Sun Gulf and put them in a cart, basically, on your way to White Willow Plaza. You made a, uh, a new friend. There was uh, someone who had a pop-up merchant table uh, by the name of Clem working under the Doing Business As, or DBI, uh, Wizard Steve. Uh, Wizard Steve uh, triggered Thok in a very negative way, but you all left with something that was very interesting, not exactly something you would find in a classic shop. Um, the rest of the day was mostly of travel, and in the evening, the four of you convened, and I believe that's kind of where we left it. Yeah. So... It's morning. Um, <clears throat> so, Bill, who was uh, taking watch last? I think it was Alder, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, correct, yep. Okay. So, Alder, you're obviously up early enough to see the sunrise. And, uh, Drem, I'm going to guess, as per usual, you are going to go and meditate. Are you meditating in the tent, or are you meditating out in the woods? Uh, I think I'd do it out in the woods. Just get, get some more nature time. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe find lack of so or Alder, something near us. <clears throat> Perfect. Alder, as you're kind of like concentrating, uh, you hear shuffling from Dremel's uh, tent, beards kind of to the side, hair's all a mess, kind of bleary-eyed as, you know, the, the two suns start coming up and the sky goes from this deep sapphire and starts going into this uh, almost amethyst color. As... Drum, you kind of finger guns and you fuck off into the woods. Um, after a few minutes of walking in the woods, Drum, you kind of sit on one of the logs, breathe in, center yourself, put on your happy face. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check for me. <laughs> Ten. Okay. You're good. Cool, cool. All right, all right. You're like looking around for a fucking bird and you don't see one. Mm, no fucking pole. <laughs> no fucking He's a big pet. Yeah, no fucking <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So after a few hours, uh, Donner, I would assume you would be the next to wake up because... Fox's been doing something new, which is he's been sleeping in. So you kind of look through the sliver that's in your tent of the, the beam of sunlight that's kind of hitting you right into the eye as one bloodshot eye kind of looks out as you kind of scan the tent. Oh, I don't 
No, there's kids or something out. Oh, no. No. <laughs> and so then you I just kind of know. You get up. Yeah. Knees kind of creak a little bit, pop as, you know, you've, you're in a kind of awkward position when you woke up. You're kind of like this. You're doing the, uh, the thriller pose. Um, where's, where's Penelope? Penelope should be, should be with you. Okay. Your figure. I sh- want to make sure she's around. It's fair. So you immediately grab Penelope. As you kind of come up, you put her under your shoulder. And you kind of come out and alder. You start making a fire for for breakfast, and eventually Rosalie joins you. She has her hair kind of up and pulled back. As she's kind of down to just cloth. Usually it's kind of more of just different kind of coats and different leathers that she'll wear with the uh, like the shirt and trousers she wears, but she's just kind of just hanging out with the, the shirt and trousers, and she kind of sits next to you and kind of looks at the, uh, the fire starting to kindle and prod. And uh, you kind of sit in silence as we'll eventually get to Thok. Uh, Thok, you kind of open one eye, open the other one, and you kind of sit up. And across from you, seated, is is Manu looking at you inquisitively. Have, have you been sitting there all night watching me sleep? Well, I'm not really watching you sleep. Why didn't you get up for the sun? Tired. Tired from riding a horse. Yeah, it's it can be tiring. <clears throat> and he looks at you. My horse is doing most of the work. I know, but I I still have to hold on. That's tiring. I'm engaging muscles that I normally don't when I just walk. And he just kind of he just peers into you and pierces you with his eyes and he's like this wouldn't have to do anything with that and he kind of points over and gestures to your armor that's been hung up no why why would it i'm just tired yeah by the way can... mm. what i said he was saying you haven't wanted in a bit i haven't really had a need to we're traveling with a bunch of kids. What are they going to do? Throw an apple at me? Could be a hard apple. True. I still got my shield. I'll be okay. It looks like you You were saying something. I was just wondering, can, can other people see you or is it just me? Like, does it just look like I'm talking to myself? don't know yeah that's that's gonna be fun Let's probably get up get a move on now <sighs> I guess you guess I guess I guess I'm just saying and you see him and he gets up and you actually see him like move the uh, the tent flap and go out Uh, Alder, you're just kind of waiting, and eventually, uh, after a few moments, you kind of hear Thok talking, and then a moment or so passes, and Thok eventually kind of pushes the the tent flaps open as a very wide-eyed Thok and, like, bleary-eyed Thok kind of comes out as... It's, like, I would say maybe about 7 a.m. Usually you see Thok a lot earlier, up a lot earlier than that, usually around the same time as Dread. Um... How uh, how you doing, that big fella? He's tired. <sighs> and uh, I see talkative in the morning, huh? <clears throat> yeah, sometimes you just have to have that conversation with you know your internal monologue to kind of wake yourself up in the mornings. Um. Okay. Uh, yeah. Whatever you say. Yeah. But, um, 
I mean, I'm usually the one on last watch, so pardon uh, my intrusion here, but come you're not the uh, not waking up so early anymore. I just I haven't been sleeping well. I'm just tired. That's all. I'll be fine. Okay, well, I've extended it before. I'll extend it again. You know that if you uh, you ever need anything, or you just want to talk. I am here and usually level-headed. Thanks, Alder. I'll keep that in mind. Of course. Okay. So, Thok, you kind of sit down and eventually <clears throat> the four of you kind of sitting there as, Drum man, you had a great meditation sesh. You're waiting for Paul to fucking come out of nowhere and Paul is nowhere to be seen. Probably dead. Hopefully dead. Man, that's all yeah. I've ever wanted. And you guys kind of see Drummel come out of the uh, forest and he looks like he is like happier than a pig in shit. He's just a <laughs> wide grin across his face as you kind of, you look calm, brother. Hey, man. What's up, brother? Wait, is Donner there too? Yeah, I was assuming Donner's there. My guy. <laughs> you, uh, you look like you slept well. Yeah, man. Slept pretty well. Had a good meditation. Something inside me saying that piece of shit bird, but Paul is dead. And uh, just knowing that his energy's out of this world just brightens my Because Paul's oh, a big fat cunt. I've never... Uh met someone quite so passionate about a bird before so it, this is a first for me but if that's the case uh good for you yeah i Happy mean man you. alder's right there he is very passionate about birds i alder I mean, are you are you offended the death of birds or yes you didn't say that though so, Understood. I think you just you need to be are more in careful. Rare form today. You need to be more careful with your words. It is current year, after all. <laughs> you know, it's hard to get out of that one. It is current year. Yeah, these are facts. Well, and Rosalie kind of gets up and going to go check on the caravan, and she's going to go off to the cart and check on the children that you have all mushed into a cart. <laughs> Yeah, cart mush. <clears throat> yeah, the good old cart mush. So, what do you I'll, guys? You know what? I'm gonna go with her. Okay. So, you follow her over to the cart, and I believe what I said was the the back or the front of the cart was uh, taken off and put over the the top as like a drape. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me. And a couple of kids are like up. Uh, little whiny but rosalie immediately goes over to harley and hugs her and she's you know whispering to her like did you have a nice time with your friends and how did you sleep just basically checking in with her and this is, like the, right, this is the right quiet. amount of kids in the cot right uh go ahead and uh roll a <laughs> perception check one uh eight sure you're like, yeah, I think that's everyone. Perfect. It looks like everybody's here and accounted for. And Rosalie goes, okay, well, I'll start. Hopefully we can start fixing some food for them. I'm sure they're starving. It's going to be gross, but it'll work. Why is it going to be gross? I mean, it's always gross. It's just kind of magic food. It's not good. She, she goes, okay. Um, I guess we will maybe don't say gross in front of the kids and let them know that it's not going to be good. Sorry, it's going to be disgusting. I'm not excited at all. And all the kids are like, <laughs> and, you know, they react like kids react. They're like, oh, it's going to be awful. Yeah, it is. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Uh, so eventually, uh, while that's kind of going on, what are the three of you discussing or going over? Uh, I think start off exchanging uh, pleasantries, um, and I'll ask, uh, how both of y'all sleep last night? 
Uh, my trance is fine. Uh, didn't notice anything out on watch. Uh, kept an eye out for your bird and didn't fucking see him. So there's that. Nice, you seem pretty pleased. Seem pretty pleased as punch to not see him this morning. So that's good. It's probably dead. So I'm pretty. I'm, I'm peachy. I mean, I don't like a dead animal myself, but he was kind of an ass. So yeah. So it's like. If someone has to die, or one of the animals has to die, it's probably it's a good that it's that one, you know? I can possibly make an exception to the rule, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so Alder hates birds, got it. Uh, hey, Thok. hey, 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 Aya, Aya, you didn't hear that, that's not true. Thok, you didn't get, uh, you weren't up around the same time. No, I didn't sleep well. Oh, I feel that. <clears throat> sleeping in a tent's not the same as sleeping in a, in a town. No. But it's fine. We'll make do. Kind of go That's inside, fine. and you look up, and next to, to Alder is Manu, kind of crouched, looking at you. And then I'll say, you know, hopefully, uh, ho- hopefully, you start to get a little bit acquainted to it because uh, I know that you said that Ashiki might have a map for us when we get there, but gods know how far away we are from, you know, from Flamingo Bay or wherever we're going to be heading, um, you know, to get you reacquainted with your ship. So yeah. I've no, got a lot I, of nights of tents, so hopefully you get some better sleep. I think I'll be fine. I just, uh, it, it's probably everything that's happened in the last, like, few days probably just catching up to me. So, and I forgot to call Sue yesterday to make sure that her and the ship were fine, and yeah, I'll be okay. How mad at you do you think she'll be? <laughs> as mad as she always is, you'll find out. It'll be a miracle well, she doesn't attack me whenever I walk on the ship. I mean, I've only heard a little bit offhand of your conversations, but it seems like she's a bit of a firecracker, huh? She, uh, sure, more like a fireball. <clears throat> it's kind of just not the person that you're aiming at. It's everyone in that vicinity that is affected by her energy. I cannot wait to be stuck on a boat with her for <laughs> some time. She's she'll grow on you. Don't worry. She's she's a little apprehensive at first, but she's just all work and usually no play. But she's no, that's, a, that's at least reassuring. Yeah, yeah. She's she's very level headed. I I like to have fun, but she. She draws a line of what fun is. Yeah, I mean, you didn't nerd. want to buy a bar with us, so I don't know how much fun you like to have. We'll find out. Do you think she'll want to buy a bar? Not necessarily. Do you have a bar so, in your ship? I mean, we have casks of ale, but we don't have a bar. Do you think that she would like to have a board that she could pin her interest to? You know what? I've never thought about it. We should ask her. That that should be the first thing you ask her when you meet her. We'll see what she says. Yeah, you open with that, and then I'll come in and say, "Hey, how about a bar on the boat?" And and like, I don't know, maybe I can get some of the revenue because I'll name it. Just spitballing, you know. What are you gonna name <clears throat> the bar? I'm thinking puzzles. <laughs> puzzles? Why? Well, that's the puzzle, man. Get people coming in. God, you're such a thinker. <laughs> so while Dremel is talking about puzzles, Rosalie and Donna, you kind of come back. And Rosalie goes, um, Alder, if I could get some of the, the food that you can make, I'm going to start trying to feed the children. Oh, that would actually be uh, Thok. Um, Thok, can you help out with that? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'll go ahead and cast create food and drink. Okay. Under my uh, breath, I say we all could have helped out if we had that bag of rats. Of rats in the morning, rats <laughs> at noon, rats at night. When rats are on a bagel, you can eat rats anytime. <laughs> Look, when you have the rats three ways, that's when you're living the life. Ugh. This is the rat Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. It takes you a, while, a good portion. Uh, you actually kind of go up with Rosalie and you figure out that a better way would just be to the cart and start passing the plates. 
eventually the kids start eating and Rosalie kind of comes back and she's like, you see her like put a spoonful in her mouth. and It's disgusting, right? I told you. It's not disgusting. It just doesn't just... taste like anything. That's disgusting. It could be poop. You don't know. That's the beauty of it. That it could be poop? <laughs> doesn't No, <laughs> that you can have it taste as whatever the hell you want. Like it's just there. It's kind of is this like maybe soybeans, like a paste or a block? Or if poop? that's what you want to taste, why not? No, I do I just don't know what this is. Like I mean everyone ate it yesterday, so I don't see why we have a big deal today. Because we didn't know it was magic poop. I mean, I I think it actually creates food. It's just bland. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Got them. It's, it's like apples and just bland apples. Yeah, have you ever tasted an apple that doesn't taste like anything? Yeah, yesterday. <laughs> when you had an apple that didn't taste like anything. If only we had some sort of infinite supply of tasty, <laughs> tasty meat. What oh, kind of Dremel, when would we ever and how would we ever procure something of that nature? Well, that's funny you should ask, Donner. Because just the other day, we were offered a bag of unlimited rats. And I look at Alder. And now we don't have it. Oh, why, why didn't we take that, that bag of unlimited rats? Well, because no one wants... Nobody wants to fucking eat rats, and then I just walk away. And I keep going. So Alder wanted a bow and arrow. You know, a thing you can get anywhere. So instead, he traded in the bag of unlimited food for whatever. What did you get? A lady shoe. Oh, for a lady shoe, which I ended up getting, so that's kind of cool. But it's it's not a bag of rats. It's not a bag of rats, but I can teleport now. And then I'm going to go ahead and cast summon animals again, and I'm going to summon a bunch of rats all over Dremel's head. How many rats? Eight rats. I thought you walked away. You summon them from a distance, bitch. From a distance. I mean, it doesn't bother me at all. I just feel like I got new friends. Hell yeah. So, <laughs> as eight rats just kind of tumble off of you and go and skitter off. Oh, Millie, There's going to be Bobby, so many fucking down. rats in this wood, these woods. Okay. There's been a huge influx in the rat population. <laughs> so yeah, weird. Real quick, so how how does this how, his summon rat thing work? Does it create new rats or does it take rats from another place? It conjures them. It's not so, like which it one? pulls them from another area. It's that they That's are new creating rats. Creating new rats. So you are creating new rats. Correct. Man, yes. you really don't care about the environment, do you? Uh, considering I'm adding to the ecosystem, what if these are an endangered species of rats? Did you think about that? Yeah, I did. You're taking a foreign species and bringing it into a forest where it may or may not belong. That's called cool. invasive. Invasive, that's the word. I wouldn't just bring something that doesn't exist in this world, yeah. So oh, yeah, what kind of, what's the species of rat? Uh, ratus fucuus. Yeah, that's not a real <laughs> word. I'm with Dremel on this one. I don't think that that's a kind of rat. Oh, excuse me for not speaking Latin, so. How's your nature again? Plenty good, thank you. Sure, okay. He's got the best nature. He went to the best schools to get the best nature. Then I conjure a bear directly behind them that is hostile. Oh, good. (laughs) Just Uh, not... Let me pull up the stats for a bear. Not not seriously, (laughs) not seriously. I don't want to scare the shit out of the kids first thing in the morning. Oh, good. Uh, we'll do that later. Uh, so there's a a massive. What kind of bear is it? Is it a brown bear? No, I'm I, I'm not even. I'm not. I'm not doing that. That was a joke. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm pulling up bear. It's all right. <laughs> Bail. No, I already have all bear the staff time. blocks here. Bail. If I need them. Bail. This is Jessica. Um. So what are your what are your plans for the uh, for the trip? giving you an opportunity to talk i'm gonna try and uh keep the pace high no breaks and try and cover as much ground as we can okay so that um i can try and get into the town as quickly as possible to talk to a shiki about 
our concerns. Uh, okay. I I do want to talk to Donner a little bit to to just remind him to try to talk to uh, Rosalie because they're the two that have the memory loss, and I think she'll listen to him more. Okay. Uh, outside of that, <clears throat> I think I'll make sh- uh, make sure the kids are all organized, staying in the car, that kind of thing. Keep them entertained like I have before. And looking for mushrooms. Mushrooms, baby. Fun mushrooms? Oh, or? yeah, man. Want the fun mushrooms. I mean, food mushrooms, too, because that food's bland as fuck. What if you find one that does both? <gasps> That's everything I want. <laughs> fun food. <laughs> Fun food. <laughs> fun food. It's like a fun uh, fatty cupcake, except with hallucinogens. And nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> um, Only if I'm in a bad state of mind. Set and setting, brother. Set and setting. Alder? Uh, I'm just going to be looking at the... Uh, inv- just trying to take a look at the wildlife, uh, see if there's anything that I don't recognize. Um, and, and, of course, taking a look for any um, sustenance that I might find around. Uh, so just different... Um, you know, different types of fruits and, and berries um, that can uh, can be utilized as food later on. Not looking for anything in particular this time, though. Okay. And, uh, fuck, any goals? Um, not really. Uh, if Manu is anywhere nearby, obviously I keep looking at him, but I'll try my best to pretend like I see nothing. Okay. So and still I, ask the horse's name. So after a few hours... I ain't smart enough to remember to ask. I after mean, a few hours, you guys kind of... Well, about an hour and a half, you uh, pack up camp. You're able to kind of get everyone situated. Everyone has a bathroom break, uh, even though they're kids, so they'll probably say they have to go to the bathroom anyway. Um, and you all five start kind of riding out. Donner, uh, I'm going to assume the three of you, Alder, Donner, and Dremel, you're attached to the cart again? Yeah. Yep. Okay, Correct. so the three of you are attached to the cart. Rosalie is in the back, and Thok, I'm guessing you're completely in the back. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Donner, you're kind of leading, and uh, your horse is kind of uh, setting the pace, which is slightly higher than it was yesterday. The horses are straining a little bit, but with the three of them, they're able to kind of manage as you guys kind of start trotting. Um, let me see here. Drem, what did you want to talk to Donner about? <clears throat> Role play that. Oh, um, hey, uh, Donner, did you get to talk to Rosalie this morning? I saw you kind of go off with her for a bit. Yeah, I, t- I uh, told her that, like, I thought the food was going to be shit, and it was, so I was right. Right, yeah. So about the memory loss thing, though? Yeah, that didn't come up in conversation because we were a little busy talking about the food. And, yeah. Right. Her and I have spoken about it before. Um, I don't know if I've divulged this information to you before, but uh, we've kind of talked about it at the Scary Nightmare Church Place. Um, and she just, she says it comes, you know, she's getting bits and pieces back, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's weird. It's definitely weird. Um, but who am I to talk? I mean, do you remember what we talked about last night? Yeah. They were speaking infernal and throwing fire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. It's a little crazy. Yeah. But, like, I also remember that I'm going to try and get into town tonight, hopefully, if I have the use of Penelope, um, and just ride her to uh, Whitestone. White. White yeah. Willow. White Willow, that one. Not Whitestone. <laughs> it's a different place. Uh, and talk to a shaky. And I figured I could maybe potentially talk to Grace as well and see if maybe that's something she's ever seen in her 
wife before. Sounds like a good idea. Do do we need to come up with a with an excuse for you to go ahead? I mean, I don't need an excuse per se because I know Ashiki was um, he was doing some research for me. Uh, but if you'd like to come up with something a little more sturdy. Something like you really have to go to the bathroom and you only like doing it in towns. But I just went to the bathroom and we weren't in a town. Yeah, but like you went number one. <laughs> like you could possibly know that. I have huge ears. <laughs> I are quite and geek. Since I'm right next to them, I'm assuming that I'm hearing this entire conversation. Is that correct? 100%. Okay, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I just I just kind of figured I'd go on my way. and. Uh, I mean, why not just t- say that you want to help the cheeky get camps ready for the kids? Those There's are one man doing it all. That I could say to people that they would be like, John is a good guy. And I would be like, yeah. All right, well, it seems like we have two very good options. Either you're helping or you're helping yourself relieve a number two. Or a number three. Both? What's a number three? Oh, it's both. If you don't know, you've never had it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I like the idea of going and helping a sheiky set up camp for the kids. So let's go with that and cross our fingers that you guys don't run into anything sturdy. Oh, we could handle sturdy. No, sturdy. Like, tough. Yeah, I said sturdy. We can handle sturdy. I still don't. Your accent is so aggressive. He's saying that we can sturdy. (laughs) Oh, right. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah, there we go. We can handle it. You got the big brain boy on the mountain, so. Yeah, he's pretty steady. Yeah, he'll study study. quite well. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Um, And I would just say before they go away, the only thing that I would be careful is I would say. I would maybe be a little bit iffy, though, on telling Gracie too much, just because I don't think you want to scare her. So, just because I know you were trying to keep that to yourselves, but I'm right next to you guys. So, it's not about trying to scare her, Alda. We don't want to put her in danger. I know. I would just. If Rosalie's compromised at all, shouldn't Gracie get to know that? Shouldn't she get the option to make that decision for herself? withholding I agree, but... dangerous information at this point doesn't benefit anyone no no I, I agree I'm just saying that if you go in there straight straight saying have you ever heard a talk like a devil and shoot fire out of her hands that might scare the shit out of her right off the bat I would just say maybe try and be a little bit more subtle with it <clears throat> Older, I, I appreciate your worries but I've spent more time with people than I have animals and I can't say the same for you so I, I, I oh. got it Normally, Donner, I'd agree with you, but you didn't meet Rosalie. She's a, you know, what's that thing that, or uh, Gracie, yeah. What's that thing that a spider does when it goes really, really fast? Scurry? Yeah, kind of, oh, skittish. Yeah, she's a bit skittish. Okay. So, just, uh, you know, use your words in like a fancy way that make things sound not as bad, but then probably tell her, just... Like tact, you know? That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't tell her. I'm just saying be careful with your phrasing because you might scare the ever-living shit out of her. Like, don't call her demon. Call her, like, less than human. (laughs) Oh, I like that. And Donna writes it down. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. So, Donna, you're going to detach yourself from the cart? 
Uh, no, I'm going to wait till we make camp tonight. And then I'm going to use Penelope to ride into White Willow. Okay. Uh, so, Drem, you said you're also looking for mushrooms, correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, so during the, the travel, you kind of get off your horse and it's moving at enough of a pace. You can kind of catch up to it. Uh, go ahead and roll a nature check for me. Hmm. One. (laughs) You, you look around and you don't really find anything. You don't find too many fungi or mushrooms in this area as you eventually, after like 30 minutes of just foraging, you kind of come back and get back on your horse and you're like, you found a bird. It's too dry. It's, it's a pretty humid place. No, God, <laughs> it's too dry. Okay. Um, As I pout then, to myself. Uh, Alder, you said you were looking at different wildlife? Oh uh, yeah, just looking for different wildlife and uh, seeing if I could find any different kind of like fruits of vegetation that could be deemed as food. Uh, and then one other thing uh, that I didn't mention earlier is I would probably uh, instruct Aya to scout a little bit ahead. So that way if she notices anything uh, that could be a potential roadblock for us or um, any danger, of course she can fly back to let us know to pre- prepare for it. So Okay. So, <clears throat> a few hours, go ahead and roll a nature check to see if you can find any kind of vegetation. And then if everyone could roll me a perception check for me. On a nature check, that's a five. Oh, God. And on a perception check, a 12. 12, okay. Rolled like shit early today. Uh, 19 for my perception. Okay. <laughs> 18 for mine. Okay. Three. Okay. Unless I can use my passive, in which case, more. (laughs) Same. (laughs) Great. Uh, You guys are fine. So, you said you rolled a five for nature? So, you don't find anything out of the ordinary of you, what you haven't found before. So, different kinds of edible bark different kinds of berries and vegetation, different kinds of leaves that aren't the tastiest, but they're at least, uh, they can break down. And it's something different from what Thok has been able to cook. So not enough to feed an army of kids, but at least enough to... Possibly spice it? Yeah, gotcha. Um, And, you know, for the next few hours, I kind of flies forward, takes her sweet time, kind of flies back. Um, maybe on the third or fourth pass, she kind of takes a little bit longer to come back and you're kind of waiting as, uh, the party is continuously still moving. Uh, Thok, you doing anything? Um, as we travel, if Rosalie has Harley on her horse, Mm -hmm. then I would invite Naldra so that like Harley and Naldra could like ride side by side with me and Rosalie together. Um, since Rosalie obviously is going to be the one keeping an eye on her and watching her. And then as we pace, um, I would potentially ask, like, I'll draw a few questions like, hey, like, what's your mom's name? And, you know, do you have any siblings? And kind of, like, try to gather some information to have an idea of what we're looking for and potentially ask Sue <laughs> Right. to let her mom know or something but okay um so the information you kind of gather is um her mom's name is uh i don't like any of those names uh <laughs> Tath. um she doesn't have any brothers and sisters and um her mother actually came with her and her father is left home, and he is a uh, lull trunch. What is it? Lull? L O L T U T R U C H. L O L true. <laughs> true. Got it. All right. 
That's pretty much it. Like then I would just ride with her and kind of like make her smile and laugh and just have fun with Harley side by side on horses with Rosalie. Yeah. And then Rosalie kind of smiles at you and they're, you know, Naldra and Harley are, you know, exchanging words across from the horses and it's just like kid shit. It's it's little like things that that seems so important to them is so minute and, you know, crazy to you. Mm-hmm. Um, anything you're particularly saying to Rosalie? Um, no, she's gone through so much shit. And I think mentally I have too. that. I think there's like a silent respect of just, I don't want to bring any of that back. So I probably wouldn't initiate anything unless she did. Okay. So, We're just both stayed. sulking in the back. <laughs> she stays pretty quiet. You guys are kind of side by side at this point because you kind of sped up and she kind of let back on the reins a little bit. As the uh, the five of you are kind of moving, you, kind of, you see two other uh, people by horseback kind of coming up. And uh, they're about maybe 100 feet away as um they just seem like blobs at this point um and you see one of them kind of like look at their hand and then look over and uh they kind of halt as you guys are kind of trucking forward doing anything uh i'll lean over to donner and say i don't i don't like this uh i'm gonna kind of look at dremel and nod in agreement and uh, kind of put my hand on uh, the hilt of my sword. Okay. And I'll, I'll lean back. I'll, I'll give Alder a look. Kind of, <clears throat> you know when you point with your eyes? Yeah. I'll, you kind of do yeah, the yeah. point. Little, little kissy point. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> so Alder, you kind of take notice of these, these two people on horseback as they're kind of halted as the cart is continuous, continuing to move. Where where are they in relation to our caravan? Are they still a hundred feet ahead of us, or are they? I'll say they're a hundred feet ahead of you as you're slowly going. It's like ninety nine, ninety eight feet. All right, because I don't think I'd let them get around us. Okay. Kind of kind of having a conversation with Donner and Alder as well. Um, yeah, I think that'd probably be a good idea. So I think I'm not sure to... what the etiquette would be here. I don't know, but they stopped moving. And and we saw that they looked at their hand and then looked at us. You saw that one of them looked at their hand and then looked back up and then stopped. Okay. And the other one behind that person, their horse, like they're they're kind of staggered. That person just stopped altogether. As soon as they looked at their hand and like looked over. Uh, if everyone else didn't see that, I'll relay it to them as well. Okay. You don't think it's anybody from the prison, do you? I don't know. I think we're, <clears throat> I think we're a little too far from the prison in order for anyone like that to be out these parts, these in this <laughs> area. I mean, fuck, I don't know. I don't want to get back. Get, if we get in in within like twenty feet, we can uh, kind of stop the caravan, have Fock and Rosalie stay here, guard the kids, and go up for a conversation. Sounds like a plan. Does it sound like he's saying conversation? Like he's putting it in air quotes? Like we're probably going to beat the shit out of them? Uh, I'm saying it in a way that's like, if we have to beat the shit out of them, we will. Okay, so that's not the game plan out the gate. Got it. All right, cool. No. <laughs> Ideally not. I'm trying okay. to pick up on social cues. I hope I'm getting better. <laughs> so, so good. I'll say Rosalie and Thok are like 20 feet behind you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to call out for, for Thok. Okay. Yeah. So, Doc, you hear Donner calling for you. All right. Uh, uh, can you come up here or message me or something? 
Uh, I'm on my way, and like, I'll tell Rosalie, I'll be right back, and I'll trot ahead. And, and as we pass the wagon, is it? A, it's an open wagon, right? Or like yes. an open cart. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. lift Nalra into the cart and say, "Stay here. Be careful. Have fun." And then <laughs> go to Donner. Okay. So I, I, we're keeping the same pace. So we uh, noticed these two gentlemen up there, or blobby people. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> one of them looked at their hand, and they have stopped moving. Uh, and we are approaching. Uh, DM, how, about how far out are we from them? Um, as you're kind of going, you're now at about maybe 88 feet. Okay. Um, they stopped, looked at their hand, and they have not moved. They've kind of locked on to us. So the plan is if they don't start moving first, we're going to leave you and Rosalie here to guard the kids. And then Dremel, Alda, and I are going to go see what they want. Okay. Um, it just seems strange on this road to just kind of wait. Uh, makes how, me how far away do you want me and the cart to be? Uh, I don't want to get closer than like 40 feet with the cart. Okay. So we're getting kind of close. No problem. I'll give that Rosalino and uh, you guys just get ready for hopefully nothing. All right. And I'll casually slow down kind of pull on the reins to slow dust down and okay. go back and pace with rosalie and kind of fill her in on what's going on so that we and her are going to stay with the cart and watch the kids while they just figure out what's going on Tremble. would uh, a single horse be able to pull the cart like how how tightly are we attached to it you're fairly buckled in the, uh, the three of you have been able to pull the cart. Remember, there's a big chunk of kids on that thing. Oh, yeah. I didn't well, know Dusk if was is, an easy detach. Dusk is big, isn't he? Like, bigger Dusk than Dusk is horse? very big. Okay. I'm just thinking for future. Right. Would, like, would it be safe to say that he would maybe take up the same size as two horses? Like, I'm, try I'm trying to, like, scale him because I'm, like, in my head, I'm imagining this, like, fucking... I sent you the picture of the horse. Yeah, you sent us a Clydesdale. I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's, I would say he's medium, almost to the large scale. Oh, he's a big boy. He's a chonker. Um, he's chonky. So is is anyone just keeping an eye on the two figures as you guys are kind of talking? I would say I'm drilled in on him at this point. So all two, both of you. At yeah. one point, you kind of see the person in the front kind of it looks like they spit in their hands, and then they kind of throw it on the ground. Mm. As uh, you kind of see, that their head is kind of obscured by this uh, very wide brim. As it, they're just hanging out, and it looks like the the other person is conversing with the other one. Uh, I know we're somewhat far away, but are there any like distinguishing features that I could make out on the two of them from this distance? They look like a brown and black blob. One's wearing a hat, you think. Okay, no, though, since he said we're about like 88 feet away or so, that's why I, I yeah. think I'd maybe get a little bit more visible. Um, okay. <clears throat> how, how far away are we? You're creeping up on about 78, 77. Okay. Then you said that they have like a wide-brimmed hat. That kind of comes to a the, point. The person in the front does. It's it's actually it's not like a bunt. It's more like a, a triangle kind of. It's like a uh, kind of like a Durango hat. That's the only thing. I, the only way I can describe it. I don't know what that is, so I'm gonna look it up. Okay. Do you it's remember like the band Lone Star? It's that Durango hat. <clears throat> 
like, like, Wait, like, like a, oh, it. this one. Yeah, the first one came up with just a flat brim cap that said Durango on it. I'm like, that's not, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't like, Yeah, it's that one. It's that's Aston Kutcher, one. circa 2005. It's a snapback. It's weird. It says Von Duck. It's a trucker cap. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to click on it, but I don't know. How far does the tech, oh, there it is, 60 feet. Uh, when we get into 60 feet, I want to use my defined sense to mm-hmm. cast detect good and evil. Okay. And what does that give you? Uh, Until the end of your next turn, you can sense anything affected by the hollow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. No blip. Okay. As 60 feet slowly starts coming to 55 feet. um, Kind of that pulling back on the horses. Okay. You kind of see... these two people conversing, the first person in the front, they're on this brown horse. They're kind of in beat up different kinds of weathered armor. Um, and it seems like there's this massive kind of coat with a, uh, a hood in the back as uh, their hands are kind of resting on the saddle in the back. You see actually this massive three pronged trident. Um, and the person in the back is completely covered head to toe in this kind of black cloth that you can kind of only see. Uh, I'm sorry, they're head to toe in uh, black cloth, but they have this kind of brass helmet that has this uh, kind of visor in front of it. It's this oblong, that's the only way I can describe it. It's an oblong helmet that kind of peels back. Okay. As the... And there's two, right? There's just two of them that there we can see. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to start, like, as we're getting closer to that, like, 40-foot mark, I'm going to start looking around us to see if there's anyone else, like, in the woods or, like, Go ahead brush. and do a perception check for me. Uh, I'll, I'll assist him with that. Okay. Natural 20. You hear some rustling in different directions, but can't really tell if it's wildlife or it's something else. Uh, I'm going to kind of lean over to Drem and be like, hey, um, one of you should stay with the cart with Thok. I think that there's more than two. Uh, So there, just to get a picture, how far between the cart and them are we? If there's 55, is it 40 feet? Are we 40 feet now? If that's what you're trying to go for, either 40 or 50 feet. 40, 40 feet would be where I would like to stop. So have we already started walking? Are we like 10 No, we're, I think we just stopped. Yeah, like you're just stopped just... at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah. You or Alder Al- could stay. Alder, Alder, hang out here. I think you, uh, you'll you be better served with Thalk, just in case. And I'll kind of lean over to Alder and say the same thing. I think there's more than two. So maybe you and Thok need to both be here. Watch the kids. Yeah, for sure. And then and, uh, uh, his talk made his way. His talk's still up at the front with us, right? No, he's in the back. No, he went Rosalie. back to talk to Rosalie. Okay, in that case, uh, I'll be. Uh, I'll just. Be like, I'm gonna go talk to Thok, and then I'll just kind of hop off the horse. Oh, hey, to... Alder. <clears throat> uh, yeah. If we yell uh, Kazan, just come running. Kazan. Kazan. Okay. Yeah, come running for you. Got it. It's called a call back, I'll... Justin. <laughs> And I'll uh, dismount my horse. Okay. Me too. And then I'm on my way back to Thok to tell him that I'm staying with him and we need to be alert. And um, I'll actually specifically say, I don't know if you need to, but I would armor up just in case. Do you think it's going to be that serious? It's going to take me like 15 minutes to put it on. I mean... Think you're good without it? I think we'll be fine. Um, DM, I mm-hmm. would also, as we're coming up, I would have reached in my pouch, and uh, I'm just kind of tossing this iron ball up in the air, just kind of tossing it. Okay. When uh, when we get to thirty feet, I'm gonna use my furbolg magic and cast detect magic, okay. which lets me know anything in the thirty foot radius. Okay, so 
as you guys start to approach, um, the person with the Durango hat takes their hat off. Um, they are they're most likely in their late 40s, early 50s. Stocky kind of builds, kind of this choppy black hair, this beard. There's a scar that kind of runs down the uh, his face. He's in this overcoat with the hood on it. And he's just kind of grinning ear to ear at the moment. He's just kind of smirking. And um, Dremel, as you kind of push out, as you push um, against these two people, it kind of, there's like a void that kind of goes around them. Well, when I push out to sense magic? Mm-hmm. So it's, I'm not getting nothing. I'm getting a void. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'll lean to Donner and say, uh, I'm getting a... I'm getting a weird thing off them. It's not magic, but it's not nothing. It's not not magic. You know, the only way to hide from magic is better magic. So, and I'll uh, as we're kind of getting closer, I'm just gonna kind of yell out, uh, "Good afternoon, gentlemen." And uh, the one in the front goes, "Good afternoon." Uh, we were on our way to Sun Golf, so kind of wondering if we were in the right direction. Oh, first of all, got to say it. Love your accent. It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, you, you are absolutely heading in the right direction. Um, just kind of curious um, why you guys stopped. You didn't want to meet us or... Just, uh, just curious about the area. Um... We're, uh, we're kind of, uh, give me a moment, kind of looks behind him and the person with the helmet kind of crosses their arms and looks at, uh, like this kind of ledger and, uh, you see them and they kind of just do kind of these different hand signals and the other one just kind of smirks. He goes, um, sorry, a uh, little bit lost. I'm trying to meet a, a contact. If you will, maybe you can help me out. You might fit the profile. Maybe you've you've run into uh, a few people like this. Um, sorry, shot in the dark. You can you can be completely uh, offended by me. And he looks over at you, Dremel. You wouldn't by chance be named Dremel, would you? Uh, Omicas. Uh, no, sorry. My name is uh, Alden. Go ahead and roll a deception check. <laughs> 22. <clears throat> kind of smirks. And that wouldn't make you Don or Lepter at all, would it? No, uh, that's not me. Sorry, mate. Mm. Looks over to the side. Elfrin is named Alder now. You know, I I love all the questions y'all you're asking. Um, you know, but I have some of my own. Um, what do you want? Uh, you know, I found um, that there was a shop in Sun Golf, um, and they have something I was in a uh, in a low supply of. It was uh, uh, minding your own fucking business. Ah. Uh. You know, better watch out, because if you run out of that, you're going to run into more of my foot in your ass. So let's be careful. Oh, don't want to get those pretty boots dirty, though, eh? Uh, probably not. Mm. Yeah. And you see how many looks back, it's like, 250 ain't bad, is it? The other person just kind of goes, I mean... And he kind of stretches, and you hear all these bones kind of crack and creak, and he goes, I mean, worth more life. Tell me, uh, what's in the cart? What's in the cart? Yeah. I mean, you're more than welcome to go look if you'd like. It's a oh, supply. Off the horse. It's a supply of uh, mine and your own business. I'm in need of that. Could you procure a mine and your own business from the cart for me? I'd, prefer I'd gladly to. accompany you myself. Just mm. hop off that horse and let's have a chat. Yeah, you could have a chat. And you see him and he kind of looks at the, the different trees and the different brush and he goes, 
I mean, even if you started turning back, I mean, the horses wouldn't get too far, would they? Before what? You're a small fellow. Well, I mean, it doesn't say you're a small fellow, but I can... Well, you're surrounded. <laughs> you my know, hand. <laughs> I've faced worse odds than this uh, this week. So if you really want to pick a fight, uh, we can do that. However, we do... We've got a job to do, and... I understand that. You're unfortunately kind of pushing our schedule back further. So if you just kindly let us pass, we don't have to make the biggest mistake of what will be your not long enough life. And he kind of leans forward and he goes, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, just a little one. I've been hunting down adventurer-like soups for a very long time. I've also have been uh, hired by Brit Stoneward, and he says the four of you is his property. I don't really ask about that. I see four felons that have extraordinary powers, and I usually clip them down. Bigger men have tried. Now, I kind of smile. You know... I've killed things that you'd wet your pants for right now. So, look, I don't... We don't need to do this, I promise. You are enemies of the state, and I've got a job up and hard to do. It's nothing personal. Business. So, if you'd rather not the cart or the 27 children that are in it, full of arrows... We quietly walk away. I'm trying to figure out if you just threatened a cart full of 27 children or not. I'm not hired to bring in the children. Listen, you clearly know what's going on. You know we're trying to get these kids back to safety. They don't need to die. If you let us get the kids back to the town, we'll come with you. Alive. We're worth more that way. How about this? Counter awful. We take the four of you lot. My associate here, Ruby, takes the children to White Willow. No harm, no foul. She's great with kids. And you see the the one in the gold helmet just kind of. Look, we got people waiting for us. If it's not us who brings it, I don't know, man. I don't think things work out too well. I don't think so either. I mean, you won't want the fine people of White Willow to know that four felons just stole a whole bunch of children now. At least... That's what they'll say, right? I mean, who are they going to believe, you or us? I mean... <laughs> I'm hired by the state, and you're four wanted criminals. Who are they going to believe? I can say that I'm hired by the state, and you're a wanted criminal. Where are your papers? Because mine are on me. Can I see them? How convenient. <laughs> and he goes, well... If you'd like, I can read off my number for you if you want. No, I'd just like to see them and see what they look like. Hearing a bunch of numbers doesn't really do too much for me. Mm. I think I'll just keep that to myself. Not an authority figure now. All right. So, well, we have our own papers, and I cast Minor Illusion and just do what mm-hmm. I think papers would look like. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> the there was that uh that paper that I grabbed about the Valoria, 
Um, yeah, think, the Valorian if, army. Yeah, if there were any sort of symbols on that, like a like a sigil that I could use, I would include yeah. that in the papers. So I would just hold them up. Kind of looks and <laughs> chuckles a bit. So you're going to try to show me that you're a Valorian general. Oh, no, just that this trip is sanctioned by a Valorian general. By whom? The Valorian general. And who's the Valorian general? What's the name? Look, I don't... Queen Anya will be very upset if you don't allow us to pass. <laughs> he kind of chuckles and he goes, What's Queen Anya look like, mate? She looks old. Mm. She looks withered. But yeah. She's got wings that are going to go so far up your ass if you don't let us pass that you'll never forget what she looks like again, mate. So I'm going to ask again. Just turn around. This doesn't have to be this way. Mm. Leans back. Alder, what have you been doing the, during this whole exchange? Uh, I've just been trying to listen keenly. To see if I can hear anything from the forty foot distance that I'm keeping. Um, they've seems like they've been relatively at like inside voices, so I don't think yeah. I've heard anything, but I'm trying trying to hear. Okay. Um, so you're concentrating on the conversation, correct? Yeah, well, I'm concentrating on the conversation, but obviously I'm also taking a look at everything around me to see if I'm noticing any rustling. Uh, since Donna did mention that we might be surrounded. so Go ahead and roll an investigation. Uh, oh. While you do that, Thok, you're kind of sitting there with Donna, and Manu's on the side of Dusk, and he goes, they're taking too long. Why are they taking so long? Question. Know, why don't you just go up there and listen in? If they can't see you, you can tell me what's taking so long. Uh, Alder? Can I cast guidance on myself for an investigation check? Uh, what does guidance do again? And is I don't it a think you can do it after the roll. That, I haven't rolled yet. Um, right. That's why I'm asking. Uh, it's a plus D4. Yeah, it's a plus D4 to, uh, for, for up to one minute um, on an ability check. Yeah, I mean, it's a one, it's a, a willing creature, so I, I would say you'd be able to, to cast it on yourself. Cool, I just didn't know if because it was something that you're telling me to do. Uh, so. Shit. Um, Ten. Nothing seems, uh, you just kind of hear the wind billowing through the forest. And the investigation. <laughs> Thok, you were ordering Manu to walk forward and see what I mean, they were talking he, about. He asked me what's taking so long, so I just sarcastically just tell him, hey, just go and check it out. I don't think it works that way. Well, then, I, I don't know what's going on. But you're right, it is taking too long. I think Mike forgot to mute his yeah, mic. Yeah, Mike, Mike, you didn't mute your Mike, mic. Mike, we can hear you pee. <clears throat> I, wonder if I think he took his headset off. He, this, this is he can breaking. hear us. <laughs> no, he heard us. <laughs> I was like, this river's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd this waterfall come from? We got our first uh, <laughs> pee sound. <Yay>. Bluetooth <laughs> is a great technology. <laughs> Sorry. That's really great. Um... Anyway, right. uh, I'm so sorry. Where were we? You were talking to Manu. Yeah. And Manu just kind of goes, I don't think it uh, I don't think it works that way. And how does it work? I don't know. I've never been like this before. You mean dead? No. I don't know if I'm dead or I'm a figment of your fucking imagination. Well, that's two of us, isn't it? Yeah. Meanwhile, we're you're making it together. crazy as fuck, so... Thanks about that. Listen, at least I'm not guilty about letting people die. <laughs> Necessary evil. I just clutch my fist, pissed, trying to hold it in. What? You're going to punch your imaginary friend? <laughs> this works. I have to get one jab in. So, <clears throat> the, uh, the two of you, Dremel and Donner... Uh, this cowboy 
gentleman is kind of just still leaning forward on his saddle. He looks very relaxed. And he goes, just so you know, uh, the two of you and older, you are DOA, but, uh, and I don't know why. Green one, he's got to come alive. So it would be a lot easier and more lucrative for me if you all just come on up. Well, like I said, let's get you paid. Let's get uh, the kids to, to White Willow and we'll go with you. Lovely. Sounds kind of leans back. Sounds great. Yeah, I can't tell you it's on at all. He'll come around. Um, He's sure. just jealous that you also have a cool accent. So y'all just have to talk that out a little bit. In a couple days. Sure. Not in front of the kids. Wouldn't want that. So now that we're all traveling together and we're temporary friends, might as well call your boys out of the woods. Nah. Wouldn't really want to show my insurance policy now. You only use it when you get hit, right? Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I guess let me go uh, brief everyone else on the situation and we can continue our journey. Seems wonderful. Now don't forget, Mr. Drummond, obvious in a lot of places. And he just smiles at you, shrugs a little bit. In, uh, in Elvish, I say, I won't forget. And he smiles and nods. Do I get a vibe that he knows it? Uh, go ahead and roll a deception check. Or, I'm not a deception check, I'm sorry, investigation check. Uh, 26. The minute you say, I won't forget, you see him smirk. All right. Uh, I start to walk backwards and then turn around to talk to Alder and Thok. And Donner, I'm guessing you're the last to kind of turn as they're both kind of eyeing each other up and down and you go, he looks pretty big. He's like maybe 6'3". He's not as tall as you, but he's got, he's grizzled as fuck. And he looks, he has this this confidence and this swagger that reminds you of a young you. Young, hot you. Young, hotter you. Shredded. Shredded. Uh, I look at him and I just kind of smile. And I say, you remind me of me when I was a younger man. Mm. Meanwhile, this guy looks old enough to be your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Or at least your dad. Yeah, And he kind of leans forward and he goes, looks like your blue cow friend's getting a little far from you. Don't want to be too far from your butt buddy, right? <laughs> Maybe I'm just looking for another one. Oh, you're barking up the wrong tree, mate. I'll swing from that side of the plate. When you're a corpse, it doesn't really matter what side you swing from, does it? Oh, sneaky. And I'll just wink at him, and I'll start to walk back to the car. You hear him chuckle. He's just very amused by you. And he kind of turns his head, and he's starting to talk to uh, Ruby in the back. As the two of you kind of walk forward, and Aldo, your mouth is just dry. As you're like, what the fuck's happening? And Doc, you're just kind of boring a hole into what's going on over there. Mm -hmm. It's... Hey, fellas. So, remember that time we... You know how we all met and we all got out of that place? 
Mm-hmm. So it's exactly what I said I thought it was? Yeah, it's that. So It's that. Um, yeah, shit. Uh, I convinced them to let us take the kids to White Willow, and then we would go with them willingly. He has eyes and ears everywhere, so we will go with him willingly. <laughs> I, I gathered that we're going to go willingly, apparently. So, okay. So, uh... Got the new friends. Do, do I get the sense that Dremel is saying willingly as like kind of like tongue in cheek? Like, That's a Thok question. <clears throat> Would Thok pick up on the sarcasm? I mean, my insight is through the roof, so I don't yeah, see why I would pick up on it. Yeah, my my tone would be sincere, but my eyes would say. LOL, JK. (laughs) (laughs) Got it. Drop the kids off, and once they are safe, we will go willingly. Okay. As you kind of say that, you see um, whoever's looking in the opposite direction, so I'd say Alder and Thok, you kind of see the gentleman in the front kind of cock his head, like tilt it, and tilts it back. What's he looking at? I, for one, welcome our new overlords. <laughs> yeah. I preferred the Rat King myself. Yeah, the Rat King was a great idea. <laughs> Fucking should have had the bag of rats. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's uh, get on the horses and start heading towards White Willow so we can... Um, Make sure there's only one person with a cool accent like this. Yeah, let's get there as fast as we fucking can. I don't want to deal with this. DM, how oh. many days out are we? You're about a day out. So we oh, can get there by the trip. end of the day, or? Uh, I'm sorry, you're about a day out before being on the outskirts of White Willow. So we have so at least four like, hours. So like yeah. a day and a half. You're basically a day and a half out. Tomorrow so, afternoon. One more night's rest, which is going to be. Heavy on the watch. Yeah. Um, also, how long has it been since uh, Vindrin at her hut? Um, Vindrin's been about... Because it took you a good portion to get to White Willow. Gotta be I would say five teetering. Weeks. Your escape has been at least a month and like two weeks. So, uh, so like Vindran's cool. probably been about, I would say, a month and a week. Oh, okay. It's been that long. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun, right? So we get back on the horses and we start mm-hmm. to ride. And uh, <clears throat> you see uh, the one put his hat back on, kind of nods over to where the helmet is and helmet kind of rides off a little bit forward as Uh, as as donner like turns around i'm assuming you're going to go back to the front and i'll stay in the back um as you turn around to go that way because i heard this um i'm just gonna say in primordial be careful and let you keep going Donna, uh, his eyes kind of get real big. He's like, and uh, I'm gonna say, uh, you two, back in primordial. And I'll stay in the back. And as you kind of stay in the back, Rose is like, I don't understand what's happening. Why? Why are you going with them? We are being. Graciously escorted to White Willow by these lovely gentlemen. And after you, your family, and the rest of the kids are safe, um, the four of us uh, have other business to attend to. Nothing you need to worry about. And she kind of goes, so you know them. That's why we're being escorted, right? Yes and no. 
They know yes us. No. We have a a reputation. And she kind of scoffs a reputation. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't just save an entire town without people getting to know you. So the people from a town you saved. Not exactly. I'm an adult. You don't have to be coy with me. <laughs> it's, uh... For your safety, it's better to not... No. But you and the kids will be safe. We will guarantee to that. And she kind of nods and Naldron goes, he's a pirate. <laughs> Thanks, Naldron. And That's she kind of looks secret. forward. And she goes, <laughs> she's like, why? She, she didn't know you were a pirate. Why would you hide that? Not many people are keen to pirates. Uh, try Sailor. Sailor is better. Okay, I'll say Sailor next time. Okay. Pilot. And I'll wink at her. <laughs> kind of like facepalm, like, Lord, this child. Okay. So, as you kind of come to the uh, to the front, this person <clears throat> with the hat has kind of moved to the side, so he you guys can start passing. As um, they kind of pat their uh, the horse's neck as they turn around, and they're just side by side next to, I would say, Donner, you're in the middle, or did you switch places with someone? I'd be on uh, like the right, the right hand side. Yeah, I think right I was side. in the middle. Okay, that puts me so, on the left. Okay, Alder on the left, Donner on the right, and Dremel in the middle. So your new friend. Lines up with uh, with Donner there, and kind of trots with you, and uh, he's just kind of smirking as he's looking forward. As the the other person is kind of leading and scouting ahead, uh, I kind of like side eye. Do I see any kind of weapon or uh, like armor on him? Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation for me. Uh, four. You see the big shiny stick on the back of his horse, the trident. Okay. Can't really gauge anything else. Well, what time of All the right. day is it? <clears throat> Let's say maybe it's about one or two. All right. Uh, while we're going, I'll just... To, to break a silence, I'll, I'll say, uh, so what's your name? Because we're going to be traveling for another day. I think uh, we might as well make it as pleasant as possible. We are going to make you a very rich man. Well, I won't say too rich. I mean, your bounty is fair. Uh, definitely have wrangled a lot more things in, but you should make a good uh, change for me and the rest of the crew. Adam. Adam? Yeah. Well, not a fan of the circumstances, but it's a pleasure to meet you. He goes, pleasure to meet you as well. Well, not that about all of you, but always fun to see you guys in the flesh. Honestly, this is the, uh, the easiest bounty I've taken in. Well, not exactly. I mean, I've, I've definitely have killed people and brought them in as well. Yeah, but that's not With how you make shiny it. stick. That's how, that's how you kill them. Oh, no, this is a big distraction because when you're looking at the stick, I do something else. Oh, you're so sneaky. Have to be. So how much are they offering for us? Well, Alder, um, they are offering a live... 500 for the three of you. 1,000 for the green one. Dead. You're all about half 250. Green one has to be alive. I don't know. He's I turn to the other guys and say, it's a little bush league, uh, don't you think? Yeah, you guys should feel offended. I am offended. I think I'm worth way more. 
Especially right. for a guy that didn't really commit a crime, but whatever. I mean, you blew up a, a, a farm, right? Or a barn. I had my reasons, and my reasons were just. Just like you have your reasons to kill people, your reasons are just. I just think you're an asshole, so... <clears throat> That's fine. I don't give a fuck what you think. I'm only a soul, I'm a dick, cunt. What else you want to call me? <clears throat> Names don't really hurt. No. I'm, I'm just going to call you Adam. <laughs> oh, my God. No one's ever called me that before. Oh, man, so we're friends now? No. <laughs> What about Goldie up there? What's her name? It's Ruby. Uh, we've been running the same circle for at least 20 years. It's good to have friends that go back that far. Yeah. Well, you know. You have a boss. The boss hires you out for different jobs. You work with a particular set of team people. Work as a unit. It's good. It's good. You got your own little squad. Inside my squad, just a chapter of the squad. I'm on this part of the uh, the country, but I mean, we got places in Valoria, Chessex, all over. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you're a well connected network. I didn't mean to uh, imply oh, no, anything no. lesser. No, 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 no implication. It's uh, and it's not just the connection. It's the uh, the guild that I'm in, the the clan. Which is confidential. Never heard of the confidential clan. You're not supposed to. How do you That's know why it's I'm not <laughs> And he kind of looks at you. And he humors you for a moment. And he goes, how many fingers is it? And he looks up at the sun. Well, I can't tell you that. Wow. It's confidential. Mm. Plus I his fingers say... are like three times the size of yours. So So is it number of fingers? Is it mass per finger? It's uh... You would know that, wouldn't you? I would, but I don't know if you know it. Okay. Hmm. For all I know, you're just a smooth talker with a with a nice friend over there. Well, if you really truly knew Thieves Cat, knock knock, Trimble. Now we're flag waving about visiting Papa Porker's crib at a seven for clean fingers. We're looking for a third gentleman for a pair of eyes. Are you interested? And how? Mm. <laughs> and where's your uncle? <laughs> Never thought of it that way. Wow. That's fat lady work. It sounds like it's too boring for you. Oh, Maybe you're not interested. We are laughing. <laughs> and it's forward and he goes, yeah, you're as confused as Blondie over there. I'm, I'm not confused. I'm just oh. trying to figure out which way uh, I'm going to kill you weighing the pros and cons. No, no, I daughter. For the head. We're, uh, we're not going to kill him. We're going to go nicely after the kids are all safe. He's in the town again. Insults my intelligence. I mean, it's not hard. Nah, it's not. About as deep as a puddle. But like a shallow puddle. It's fair. I mean, that's just because we don't know you yet. So, like, what are your hopes and dreams? Wow, that's, uh, that's another great question. I always uh, wanted to dance. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted to be a Vegas showgirl. Um, I mean, I'm just a simple man trying to make his way in the world. Aren't we all? Yeah, I like to think so. Yeah, but that wasn't a hope and or a dream. Like, do you want to be King Confidential? Do you want to, like, have a farm? Do you want to have a family? Do you want, like, a collection of real cool hats? Like, for me, my dream is I just want to go home. That's all. Simple. I'll read your file. Which home is that? 
The Abyss. Mm, it's about your real home. It's been a while since I've seen my real home. Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Everyone's been pretty good for me, actually. <laughs> City of Iron. Uh, out of curiosity, Adam. Yeah. Where's Where's my home? Where does that uh, piece of paper say that I'm from? Well, it says you're from a little bumfuck town uh, that has a road that crosses through it. Very small blip on a map that it has a very tiny name that, unfortunately, I'm not going to pull my paper out of your bounty for you to incinerate. I have no intention of incinerating your paper. Mm. You can realize or expect why I'm a little hesitant on that. No. Luke, i <laughs> not giving you any reason to doubt that I'm being completely honest. Oh. Um, I have every intention, Adam, of kicking your ass seven ways to White Willow. Yeah, all right. Just curious on where that paper says I'm from. Hell, Gora. Interesting. Yeah. That's where they found you, right? In the cell of Rotten and Al Gora? Something like that. Something like that. I wasn't there for it. It's not where I'm from, but yeah, I get it. It's not you. It's not your nation. Fuck all. Have you here? Doesn't really matter where you're fucking from. You could be from fucking Timbuktu. Where's that? that is. Uh, it's across the uh, go fuck yourself in the cunt way. You should be familiar with it. You know, last time I checked, they didn't give the city such vulgar names. I guess we've been locked away that long, huh? Yeah, you've been away for a while. Things have changed outside. So I still don't know what your dream is. <laughs> So, as you guys are conversing, Doc, you doing anything in the back, buddy? Uh, I don't know if he can hear us. Oh, no. Did we lose Carlos? You there, Carlos? No. Uh, oh, okay. it, it, like, I'm sorry. It, like, chopped up, like, right when oh, you said out. something, so I assumed it was to somebody else. No. What you doing, bud? Um, I mean, I'm with Rosalie in the back. <laughs> I've put an all drawn wagon. Okay. Um, so you kind of ride uh, up closer to the wagon, mm-hmm. and Manu is kind of back where Rosalie is. And as you look forward, you kind of see Adam kind of turn his head and he smirks and he looks back forward. Hmm. Do I recognize him, like, at all? You can roll a uh, investigation check to see if you know him. Because he keeps looking back at me, and I'm like, what the fuck does he want? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I, I think that's a five. Yeah, Four. for sure. You totally know who he is. You're not oh, sure yeah. who he is. Lifelong friend. What if he's not looking back at you? Ooh. Look bum, back bum, at bum. <laughs> Was that intentional? Because that worked out so well. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so you kind of lean back over and Manu is back in his place as you kind of get back into position uh, you kind of took both Nadra and Harley as Rosalie kind of is keeping a safe distance mm-hmm. and when you kind of get back Manu is in between the two of you and he goes it looks like he knows you I can tell that but I don't recognize him I mean, you don't remember all the people that you piss off? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. There is. <laughs> you were one of those people, actually. Are? Were? I, I don't know how to. What do you think? I'm assuming I still piss you off, so R. We'll mm-hmm. go with R. Kind of smirks. Do you. Are you tired of walking? Do you just want to ride with me? Like. Do you get tired? Like, I don't know. <laughs> that makes two of us. Um, what else can you tell? Like, how far can you go? Like, 
I know that you said that you don't think it works that way, but can like don't look at me that way. I'm confused. So are you? So I, just, I don't know. Garage. It's, a, it's a hypothesis. It's a question. You know, you can test these questions out. Why don't you figure out? Like, can you like just not go further than ten feet away from me? Is it me? Is it the horse? Like, can you go anywhere you, do you want? Think? Do you oh. think that I can walk farther than you or be attached at the hip? I don't fucking know. You're the one that got me arrested in the first place. I did, and look where we are. Well, exactly. You are. None of this would have happened if we weren't arrested. Well. <laughs> Still an ancient of death, so how do you know this wasn't my plan all along? To die Reach some kind of higher haunting? plane and then come back. Can I tell whether or not like he's full of shit? Um go ahead and roll a perception check. What is that? Ooh. Twenty seven. You know that it has been unheard of that uh, death doesn't come back. You don't come back from the dead. Once you're gone, you're usually gone, at least in this realm. Mm -hmm. Through your travel, you haven't heard of any like undead creatures, any kind of zombie. Um, I mean, you're always looking over your shoulder, especially after the Strahd encounter, that there are undead and unholy everywhere. But there really isn't from your travels. So you can be pretty confident that he's not coming back. You don't know what the fuck he is, but he's not coming back as undead. Okay. Well, tell you what, if we get out of all this, I'll try to figure out what's going on with you. I don't think it's me you should worry about, Garrosh. It's whatever you have going on with this. And he points at your chest and looks at the suns and that. Something going on here. Yeah. 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 But that's for another time. I can't figure that now. Well... Considering what you didn't even hear that you're being escorted. Could be looking inside of another jail cell. We can have all the time we need. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Getting cocky again. It's, it's confidence. There's a fine line. I'm on this mm. side of the line. Mm. Donner is cocky. Donner's an idiot. I mean, you're not wrong. But his heart's in the right place. Shit, I'm an idiot. Let's be real. Well, I mean, you're a wet match in a dark cave. Wait, but we don't match. Like, he's human. And... Oh, like, the one... Okay, like, the fire. Yeah, like, the fire. Okay, I... Shut up. And you see him, and he just kind of just he's quiet. Uh, we'll go back to the three of you with Adam, as uh, Adam's kind of looking forward. Uh, what would it take, Adam, for you to leave this place and never come back? Don't come looking for us. Off the cuff, I mean, you kind of see him. Your head. He looks. You seem calculate. In his head. Well, I'll still have to take him. Then he points over where Thok is. Mm. And you're both fifth. 2,000 gold? Do you want to make sure well, we can eat? Oh, of course. Um, however, you're not going to split us up. Just so you know, Thok's with us, so. Thok is, uh, Thok is wanted elsewhere. 
Fox wanted elsewhere. Mm. He's a popular Want, guy. Wanted by who? Wow, he's a pirate. It's confidential. I believe he prefers the term sailor. <laughs> yes. That's his word. You... He's an outlaw sailor. I'm going to kind of look back as well, and I want to see if I can see anyone in the brush. Um, if I could like get a guesstimate of how many people are in that area kind of following us. Um, go ahead and roll another investigation for me. Um, five. I would also like to be looking. Dremel, what'd you get? I didn't roll yet because you didn't tell me. And I'm going to touch him on the shoulder and cast guidance. (laughs) What does that give me? (laughs) Yeah, roll a d4 along with your roll and add that to your roll. God, why am I rolling so bad? Because your name is Pat and we're playing D&D. 28. She can hear rustling. But not. can Can I hear like patches of rustling or is it just from one area? You hear several different patches of rustling. Okay, so like three several or five several? <laughs> Not sure. All right. Um, I'm just going to kind of look at Adam. You know, this is a, this is a tough life for you. It's a tough go, tough leaving, you know. Looks forward. I get it. I understand that it's a it's a paycheck, but we're not the guys you want to take in. I'm going to be honest. And he kind of keeps looking forward, and he goes, "I know what you're trying to do." <clears throat> After the crying, after the begging, bartering. Can't really uh, let you loose, especially now that I found you. Took me a while. You know, I'm not going to cry or barter or beg. I don't want to kill you if I don't have to. Well... Ain't that pistol? Hmm. Well, I would hate to kill you too. And it's not because you're so charming, but because it would be less coin for me and my, my boss. Well, I guess, um, let's see what happens then. Yeah? Sure. This hasn't played out differently for me before, right? I'm pretty charming though, right? <laughs> like, that's why you don't want to kill me. It's for the money, but also, I am a delight to be around. Well, I mean, you kind of butt into people's conversations, but yeah, you're all right. Well, we're all sitting in the same place, so not really a sense of privacy here. Well, it's kind of a, you know, tacos, burritos kind of situation. Not a, Not chose. So, yeah, I still want to know what your dreams are, and until you kind of looks me, forward as you're saying that, until you tell me, I'm just going to keep asking you. Yeah, you can keep asking. So, like your dreams, what are you going to you know, do with all the money? Are you a dragon? <laughs> if I was a dragon, mate, you think that uh, you'd be alive right now? Maybe. I mean, yeah, because of the gold, but... Yeah, yeah well, cool. that's what dragons are. Wouldn't I turn into a big dragon and then just kind of claw you up? No, because that would get you half the amount of gold, and as a dragon, you would love gold. You're really not following the logic here. No, I guess I'm not. <clears throat> I think you're a pretty shitty dragon. Mm. It's because I'm not a fucking dragon elf. I knew that. So is it to own a hat shop? No, it's not to own a hat shop. It's, uh... <sighs> Fuck all. How did you find us? Well, I mean, not too hard to find. 
not a lot of towns out here. You ask a couple of questions. You bend a few arms. Yeah, you're not hard to track. Whose arms did you have to bend to get to us? I mean, we don't really have any contacts out of it. Just minor details. Yeah. I mean, it's not a minor detail if I'm asking you the fucking question. And just keeps looking forward, smiling. Just don't forget it didn't have to be this way. Yep. Keep telling yourself that, mate. And Donna just kind of looks forward. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else you guys are doing with Adam? Uh, no, no, nothing for me. No, not right now. Fuck, what you doing? You're pondering over there. <clears throat> oh, no, I was just perplexed with the situation yeah it's a shitty situation huh it is it really is i have voices in my head and <laughs> people surrounding us wanting to take us to jail a cart full of kids trying not to get crossed in the crossfire yeah yeah so eventually things kind of wind down Ruby kind of scouts up front. And it's at this point, Alder, you kind of notice that she looks to the side and uh, she gets off her horse and goes into the woods. And then she comes back and she has this, uh, she's procured this uh, bird cage that has uh, uh, Aya in it. And she kind of comes back out. And he goes... So I might about your pet. Let Just her one. fucking go. We're all being calm, copacetic. Your That's fine. why I'm asking once. Let her fucking go. And he leans again forward on the horse, and he goes, "I'm by the cart. You're gonna try to blow me up by all these kids." I'm not trying to blow you up. She's done nothing. She's just flying around. She was scouting for us. She exactly. is not going to do anything to you. She's not going to do anything to anybody. She's only going to listen to me. Just let her go. Looks over at Ruby and goes, <coughs> and she give him the cage. And kind of tilts her head. Comes up. Hands you the cage. It is locked. Then he goes, I won't fit alone about with it, though. Don't want to blow up your bed. I just put her, put her on the back of the, uh, on the, on, on the cart with the kids right now. Okay. And you hear them and you hear occasional, like, what's going on? What's happening? And Adam goes, oh, don't worry, kids. Uh, your friends here have graciously helped us with uh, guarding us back to White Willow Plaza. Your friends are really, really sweet, really nice people, and I, I greatly appreciate them as he eases them and eases their, their distress. So as the sun is are slowly starting to set, I think we... Uh, we my camp here. Sounds about all right. Nice. It's about that time. It's about that time. It'll be a white willow Rogan by the afternoon tomorrow. I'm sorry. What was that? I didn't hear it. I said and we'll be at white willow by the afternoon tomorrow. Yeah, just about. So... If you want to take care of them, give them their food. Me and Ruby will be fine. Set up your fire. And remember, keep an eye on 
So we. Get that up. He smirks. And you see him, and he kind of faces you guys with the horse. And Ruby is kind of looking at him. And you kind of hear more murmuring. As the four of you stop the cart, kind of dismount, and Rosalie has just been white knuckling the reins this whole time. As four of you dismount, and I'm gonna guess convene. Yeah. Well, I mean, boys. they could probably hear us, if I'm being honest. I'm kind of picking up that they can hear whatever we say. Regardless of distance. Let's get the kids fed. Let's get on watch. Watch our backs. That's all we can do. Mm. Okay. This, uh, maybe our last night together, boys. <clears throat> nah. No. It's even if, even if they took us, it'd still take at least a month to get back to fucking Stone Water. Could tell you right now, though. Be damned if this is going to be my last night as a free man. I mean, if it is, you might as well make it worthwhile. I, for one, welcome our new overlords. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of go up to Drem. Um, your when we got all that stuff from the basement. You got that shield, right? Yeah. What does it do? Other than like a shield, because it looks different. Uh, I think it's just a shield. Do it, when I attune uh, DM when I attune to it, mm-hmm. do I know everything about it? Yes. Okay. So I've and you cast detect magic earlier today, so I figured you would like know. Yeah. Did that blip? Because I haven't attuned to it yet, but... I would say it blipped when you... Yeah, when you did it. You know it's magical and arcane in nature. Okay. Um, I know it's got something. I don't know what, but... I don't know. A shield? Maybe it grows? I mean... My, my fault is if you can stand with the kids in the car... If anything were to happen, you could kind of protect them, be a little bit bigger in the way. Are we trying to take double watch? I don't know. I'm just talking out loud, I guess. I don't. I don't want to kill him. I don't. But I'm. I'm not going back. I'm not. They're not taking us back to Stonewall. <clears throat> At least not me. No, not me. Like, I still think there's a chance that we can be friends and that he's going to be our new best buddy and we'll be the Dremel. five best friends. Dremel, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. I know. Listen, I know. We just got to get through tonight and I'm trying to keep uh, keep everything as high-spirited as possible. Optimism, you know? I know. Yeah, optimism. This should be easy. And I, for one, adore our new overlords. <laughs> and you see Adam and he calls out, Not your overlord, mate. What do you want me to call you? Adam. Best friend, got it. And you hear a, like a scoff. Kill him with kindness. I'm not calling him my best friend. Well, you kind of see Ruby friend. like go off into the distance for a little bit. As How you guys big are is kind Ruby? Of like when she stands next like, to Adam. Adam's like, like what did I say? 6'3"? Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I would say she's about maybe 5'4". Okay. Slender. She's got that helmet on though, in the cloak. Like she got like a cloak or. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you can't can't really see what her body shape is, but when she was next to and brought the cage over to Alder, uh, Alder, you notice she wore kind of this red under 
kind of suit with different kind of gauntleted gloves. Um, you saw a few things on her belt you couldn't really distinguish, and then the cloak with this this hood on it. Gotcha. So, well, it takes you... I'm sorry? Uh, I was just going to talk to the group. Yeah, just you say, talk to the group while you're handing out food. Yeah. Um... Journey's not over. Over, boys. Um, but this is definitely a, a hurdle for all of us. Uh, yeah, man. I think that uh, just whatever happens, we just got to go with it. And I make eye contact with everyone. Just to... Just go with it. Adam knows All what done. he's doing. Is there any way you could at some point tonight kind of sneak off and see if there is or there how many other people there are? I mean, if you want me dead, yeah. Uh, I could. That doesn't seem like a bright idea right now. Well, I have a hat of disguise, and I can scry on either one of them. Allegedly, you have those. <laughs> Let's remember that they have eyes everywhere, and that is why I love my new overlords. <laughs> so I think, fellas, whatever happens, we should just go with it. Then let's just go for it. Let's figure I'll out look. our watches and get ready for bed. Well, I'm assuming not. They don't speak every language out there. So I look at Alder and Dremel and in Primordial, I'm like, do either of you understand what I'm saying now? <laughs> Sounds like you got marbles in your mouth there, Ben. That's a no. Good. I say the same thing in Orkish. Sounds like you got big marbles in your mouth there, man. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. Oh, yeah, we know things about you now. Yeah. You do know things about me. It's code for bowls. <laughs> I, I, I got that. Thanks, yeah, Alder. Just making sure, sure the room knew. Got it. I think they got that, too. Hey, love is love, man. Well, one night stands are one night stands, you know? Speaking of love, I would love for these people to go away. Join the club, man. So how are we doing watch? I'll go first. I would like... You know me. I would just like to be with my best friend, Adam. My new overlord that I love very much. You hear that, Adam? <clears throat> Good. It'll be a surprise. He'll lo he loves surprises. <laughs> well, you guys know that I got a, uh, what? I got the capabilities for a four-hour watch in me. So. I mean, I'll take the second watch if you want. Yeah, I think we should all take a watch. I know you want to do the four-hour older, but you know, see what we see. Everybody brings something different to the table. Oh, I know. I'm just offering to give you guys more sleep if you want it. If you can get it, you know. I don't know if I'll be able to get it with them around, but... Yeah, I don't expect yeah. to sleep too well tonight. I'm gonna sleep like a baby. So wake up crying every three hours? Basically. Shit yourself? Uh, oh, that one. Not that one. I'll just there's no there's no surprise, gentlemen. We know we know what's happening. So they know what's happening. So no point in sweating the small stuff, right? Guess so. They need uh well, fuck if you didn't hear already, they want they need to take you alive, so they know that it'll cause quite the stink if they start taking us out in our sleep. So they don't care if they take the three of us dead. Why me? 
Uh, he said because you're a outlaw pirate. Sailor. So, no, he legitimately called you a pirate. <laughs> Dremel tried to correct him into calling you a sailor, but he called you a pirate. I found that to be a little bit derogatory, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong, but still. I mean, I guess if you're a pirate, you're allowed to use the term pirate, but. Uh, Donna just kind of walks off. Kind of like oh. a dark, secluded part of camp. Okay. So you kind of walk off to the side. You tie up the... I would say you tie up the horses. Mm. Um, what are, are you looking for? Anything in particular? Mm-mm. Just some space. Um, I, I realize that one of them was going to come looking for me if I go too far out of eyesight. Sure. Um, but I just kind of get down on my knees and start to pray. Okay. What are you praying for? Um, a sign. A sign of what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to keep moving forward with these guys. Um, just saying that I I feel lost as a character, as a as a person. My character, my my morals are kind of shifted. And I don't want to kill someone that doesn't deserve it. But I also realize he's got innocent blood on his hands too. It's kind of a part of the job. Um, and I'm just asking for a sign, guidance, a weapon of some kind in particular. Um, okay. Anything. Go ahead and roll a wisdom save for me. Uh, 18. 18, you kind of, you're concentrating and you feel something kind of poke in the back of your head and it just... Nice. I kind of get up and brush myself off. And um, just kind of sit by the fire and get ready to take uh, first watch. Okay. As you go by the fire, there's one main fire. And it's the one that Adam is, is currently sitting at. And kind of has his arms crossed. He's looking at the fire. He's eating kind of this from a uh, end of like this big chunk of bread. As he kind of sees you kind of walk up. And uh, he has kind of this flagon. And you see him kind of toss it back and looks at you and he goes, Ale. Uh, that's not Ale. And I uh, hold him the last little bit of whiskey I have left of my own personal stash. Yeah. Particular about mine, too. And you see him and he tosses it back, wipes his mouth, and takes a chunk of bread out. All the kids fed, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um,. Falk is pretty good about getting it done pretty quick. He's um, good. he's good with it. Good. Great. Perfect. And you see him, and you're fairly close to him at this point. Before he was on the the horse, you couldn't get a good look at all of him, and he has these kind of like long boots. These, it looks like his uh whatever's under the coat is just all kind of padded and leathered. It looks like um, he has a few different kind of trinkets and stuff on him. There's uh, a few things attached to his hip. Uh, hat is off at the moment, but it is next to him. And as he kind of leans back, you see him, he kind of puts it back on, and adjusts it as he kind of puts his, his hands behind his head. So, I've got a wife. <laughs> oh, you're is that to Ruby? Is she your, she your lady? Ruby is not my lady. She is her own woman. Very talkative. Seems that way. Can't shut mm -hmm. her up. It's a problem. About you. It's some fellow like yourself, you probably got someone back home that you're trying to get to. Oh, like yeah. Like your real home, not 
not the other home. Halgaro, no, that's not uh it's not where I'm from. Yeah. But uh yeah, I've got a I've got a wife and a son back home. It's nice. It is. It's um it's nice to wake up every morning and and know somebody else is thinking about you too. Yeah. Probably a nice thought. Now don't mind me barging, but we're having a really don't like chit chat, like small talk. When would you leave? Why'd you go to uh, or growth or what have you? Leave uh, your, your I didn't kid. get there on purpose. I left for work. I uh, was in the family business as a hunter mm. and uh, just left for work and kind of got lost these trials and tribulations of life. That's fair. I'm sure you can relate. To an extent. We all make our own sacrifices. Some a little harder than others. I mean, I don't leave my wife and kid, so maybe. It doesn't get easier, but you know, at the end of the day, I did it for for them, not because of them. It gives me a little solace. Yeah. Sits back up. He's like, no, no, I can understand that. So uh, I'm guessing you're keeping an eye on me while your friends sleep, eh? Yep, it's the plan. Yeah, it's fair. Do you know how to play cards? Uh, not well. But I'll sure as shit give it a shot. Fucking hell. I'll teach you. And for the, the next two hours, if you're taking a two hour watch, mm-hmm. he teaches you the the ins and outs of playing a particular card game. I would say to the extent of kind of like a high card, low card to the extent. And he explains and when he explains everything and he talks to you, it, it's kind of like you're in a bar and he's like teaching you. Like, when you play a card wrong, he's like, well, no, let me see your hand. And he shows you, well, this is what you want to actually play because this is going to be high, and then you could beat me in there. So he's he's legitimately showing you and teaching you how to play it. Mm. So for the next two hours, um, he wins a few. You manage to win maybe just two sporadically. You win the last one, and you win one right before the last one. And when you win, he has this kind of smile on his face. He's like, "Now, see, now you're fucking getting it, mate. Now you, now you understand the concept." And then I don't when even you play, know what again, I did. I don't. I just... All right. And then he re-explains it to you again. And it's about at the end of your watch that you kind of see Ruby trot back in. And he kind of looks. He's like, "I'll get some shut eye. I'm going to stay up for another few hours, and then we'll switch off." And you see her, and she just kind of nods. Dismounts our horse. Uh, before I go get anybody, I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna wait for Ruby to kind of sit down. Okay. You're gonna wait for her to sit down next to, if she's gonna in, sit down next to Adam, my, or if yeah, she's just gonna just, go to herself. No, like in my vicinity, I want to kind of see if I can talk to her. Okay. You see her, and she kind of has her and Adam's horses kind of tied to the side, and you see her dismount. Sets up this kind of... uh, She finds, like, this tree that she kind of... You see her lean against, and she puts her arms kind of crossed and puts her her feet over the other one, and you kind of see the back of the helmet kind of rest against the tree. Can I see any, like, distinguishing features? Can I see... Is she like an elf or a... The helmet completely covers her head and her face. The only thing is just this strip, like this, almost this visor that's just black. About any of that? Any point? It's it's completely just covered. Okay. You wouldn't even know that she was female until Adam said she. Yeah. Then I'll just get up and I'll uh, I'll just kind of say goodnight and, uh, you know, thank him. Thank you for teaching me. To play well, cards. Well, you know, can't really play with anyone if they don't know how to play. It's true. You keep practicing, you'll be better at it. 
Probably not, but I appreciate the sentiment. He's and close. I'll uh, I'll go get Trim. Okay. So my shift. Yeah. Kind of shake Trim out. It's all you, buddy. All right. You. How's the best the friends out there? So. <clears throat> How's the vibe? Uh, real relaxed. I think. Um, you know that awkward moment in a fight where you both know you're in a fight? Yeah. It's kind of like that. Hmm. Well, at least I know what I'm walking into. Hey, worst comes to worst, you learn how to play some cards. I can learn some new games. And I'll just kind of smirk at him, smirk at him and put my hand on his shoulder. And walk out the tent and go lay down. Okay. Then you just kind of put your head to the pillow and you're just kind of bearing a hole. You see where the, the dim light is against the fabric of your tent of where the, the fire is and you're just staring at it. As Drem, do you kind of come out and you see Adam and he, at this point, his face is next to the fire. And as he kind of pulls away, you see this bill of smoke as he kind of takes out this very crudely rolled cigar, cigarette. I uh, thought you were going to burn yourself for a moment. Mm. Doing that plenty of times. You got a second one? Yeah. You see him and he kind of pats himself and reaches across you. I take it and I, I try to light it in a similar way, keeping my beard far back but it's starting to get a little you smell a little bit and he's like ah oh, fuck all and he switches with you and he gives you the one he he started and you see him and he puts his face against the uh next to the fire again uh <clears throat> as i start taking hits off of it uh i pull my the the wine that vindrin made months ago yeah and uh just <laughs> want some i take a swig figure if this is my Last night of freedom, I might as well use it. See? And you see him and he chugs down whatever was left in the flagon. And you see him flip the top open. He goes, whatever you're willing to give. Uh, and I, I pour enough. Like, I, I forget how big, of, how big of a thing it was. It was like a full bottle that you're able to, that she was able to procure. All right. I, I pour, uh, like, like maybe like the. Oh, like the bottle's that big? No, no, no. The bottle's like this big. I was asking how much you wanted to put in Oh, the, yeah, in yeah. The I'd say about four fingers. Okay. And you see him and he takes a sip. Shit. What is that? Uh, hope it doesn't gross you out. It's a series of mushrooms. Mushrooms? Yeah, never had mushroom wine before, but... We met a nice lady. She uh, made us some wine. Well, made me some wine. But it's nice. Been waiting for the right time, and I guess you kind of forced my hand, but it's <laughs> better now than never. I mean, you should do that. So how'd you get into the uh, head hunting business? Shit. I mean, has anyone kind of Stumbled upon a job. You're young. You uh, you join a guild. Get a few different bosses. Get a newer boss within the last like ten years or so. Your boss uh, puts in some new things. Doing a lot more uh, group work than uh, independent work, as one would say. Because of the new boss? Yeah. <clears throat> boss not trust you? No, boss trusts me. Uh, it's just that uh, he wants to extend. And you see him and he puts his arms out and kind of wiggles his fingers. Take different jobs. Working for Mr. Stonewood, I mean, usually they hate each other, but... Enemy of my enemy, right? 
Uh, I'll just get pointed. <clears throat> uh stone war stone ward and your boss hate each other no i mean they're not exactly friendly competing you know they're gonna put up a fight right i'm counting on the fight whether they decide it's gonna be tonight whether it's gonna be right when we get to white willow before we get to white willow doesn't make any difference to me. I can help with that. All right. I have no loyalty to these guys. Met them a month ago. They broke me out. But if I can come with you, make a new life as a bounty hunter myself, You ever, uh, you ever take a life, Mr. Dremel? And I'm not talking about like, like an animal or a monstrosity. I mean, like, like another person. And you see the light just kind of blink out. I have. How old were you? First time or? First time. Shit. I'd say I was about 16. You see him and he puts his cup up. 12. <laughs> to health. To health. Are you trying to deceive him? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> if you're deceiving him, I need you to roll a deception check. Okay. Where is it? Uh, modded 20. Kind of smiles and he goes, I don't know. You might have the stomach for it. Tries to get into the guild are very hard. Oh, I can handle it. Mm. I don't know if you can, mate. You don't have to. I do. Yeah. I've had a hard life. I can take anything thrown at me. But number one is survivability. And it's clear to me that these companions of mine are not the best chance of survival that I have. I want these kids safe. Nothing to do with them. But once these kids are safe, I have I have nothing. Got no plans. Could use a bit of work. You're bonded. What's in it for me? Well, I pay off my debts. Working for you. You take a cut of whatever my pay would normally be. Till I pay you, pay off for you, or pay it all off, with interest, of course. Can I ask you something that I read in your file that's just been bugging me? Go ahead. How are you alive? I mean, I read the the report. I read the. Uh, the aftermath, how they found you. 140. And only one left. You must have maybe sucked the dick of a demon or something. I don't know. Man, if only it was that easy. I, uh, got honest truth. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe he saw something in me. I thought he was going to kill me. I saw the look of the, murder in his eyes. The man you were talking about in your report, the, the man in red. Yeah. I think, uh... Sure you weren't hallucinating. <laughs> Can hallucinations do this? And I, I lift 
a little flap to show a, a scar going across. Right above the ab, going into the ribs. Pretty flesh wound, but not <clears throat> deep enough yeah. that it caused a scar, but not deep enough that I bled out. And you see him, and he kind of tilts, and he goes, Yeah, I guess not. I guess when I said I have nothing, I wasn't totally honest. The man's real. I want him dead. And I can't do that inside of a cell. I can't do that while I'm dead. But I'd be more than happy to double your income until I find him. And he smiles and he goes, let me think about it. That fate. It's fair enough. No pressure from me. Just make it. No, oh, I get it. And I, uh, I check the, his flagon. Is that is it a see through or is it like a leather? No, it's just you kind of hear the air kind of sloshing whenever he takes a sip from it. He's not taking like big gulps. He's just kind of sipping it occasionally. No, I'll give it a smoking. I'll like give it a little tap with uh with the bottle just to see how heavy it is. And if it's pretty light, I'll, I'll pour a little bit more. Or I'll, I'll motion to him. Be like, you want some more? Flips it open. And I give him another, like, three fingers. Okay. Just, uh... Let me know without letting them know. All right. I'll let you know. Donna told me you know how to play cards. I had a feeling. And he kind of leans forward and asks you about this particular guard game he plays. And he teaches you how to play it. And the next hour and a half, I would say, is spent him teaching you that before the end of your watch. Both of your watches kind of come to an end as you're a little bit more skilled than Donner. You beat him a few more times than the two that Donner was able to beat because you're able to kind of catch on pretty quick with your big boy brain. And by the end of it, you guys are in a pretty, like, tense card game kind of battle. But every time you win, like, he doesn't look angry. He doesn't look like, ah, you bested me. He looks genuinely, like, happy. And then he reshuffles and, and plays with you. And then by the end of it, the both of you kind of stand up. Obviously, you tower over this man. He looks up at you and he goes, well, this is fun. I uh, appreciate the uh, the conversation and the drink and the cards. I appreciate the smoke. And he goes, you want to get your friend and then I'll wait? I'll get mine. Sounds fair. How funny it is. You see him and he just kind of keeps his hand on his belt as you, you procure over to either Thok or Alter. Uh, how far are the kids from the campfire? I'd say they're maybe like 60 feet away from the campfire. Okay. In the, in the stage coach. <clears throat> um, then I, I tell him, before I get uh, Thok, let me let me check on the kids. You can come with me. I yes. just want to make sure they're okay. Fair enough. Can't really uh, do much from over here, so... He gestures and he goes, please... Welcome. So I'm mosey on over, just do a head count, check how they're doing. Everyone's accounted for. Most are sleeping. A couple are restless, but everyone has their eyes closed. Uh, I'll I'll cast. Uh, is it ma major image? Yeah, I'll do, I'll do major image. Uh, just like slightly over it. I believe I can also do a sound. So I want to have very calming, like just nighttime sounds. I know we're in the woods, but. Something to yeah. kind of remind them of, I don't know, happier times. Yeah. So you do like crickets, gentle breeze, the occasional owl hoot. As you check everyone, you look back and Adam's looking at you, just keeping an eye on you. And when you look at him, you just kind of see the hand. Back at you, buddy. And then uh, it, it was Thok next, right? I think so. Thok? I think you're muted. I'm trying to... I wasn't registering. 
Um, it would be both me and Alder because he only needs four hours of sleep. Oh, if he's doing the full one, then yeah, I'll, uh... But, um, I mean, like, I'll be up with Alder. Yeah. Like, he'll be awake regardless, but I'll just take watch. Yeah, I'll, I'll say Dremel didn't know that, so I'll, I'll just go to wake up Thok. <clears throat> and just shake you a little bit. <coughs> Is it my turn? In that case, yeah, just turn. so that you know, DM... To if you yes. give me a cue, if I wasn't getting awake awoken by Dremel in that case, uh, I'll probably would wander out to talk about an hour into his watch to join it. Um, okay. Just to be realistic. That's fair. We'll see where we're at. Okay. Just figured I'd let you know. That's fair. I'll yep. tell Donner how 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 the watch go. Surprisingly pleasant. Or Dremel. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly pleasant. Uh, shared a drink. Played some cards. I mean, for someone who's trying to turn us in, he's very accommodating. Yeah. I have a feeling he has uh, quite a bit of people out there. He seems too calm. I think but... you're right. We'll find out. My watch. Then I will go and watch you. Okay. Have a good night's sleep. Thank you kindly. And I'll head out. And I head to my tent. Okay. Lay down. Head over to your tent and after about two hours, Donner, you kind of you're able to clock out, and now Dren, you're kind of sitting there and you're just kind of staring at the glow of the fire, not knowing what Adam is going to do. As a uh, thought, you kind of approach Adam and you see him, and he's kind of smirking, and he goes, "Shit, didn't think I'd be this close to you." And he's just kind of eyeing you. Hey everyone, my internet went out, so the whole stream went away. So this is going to be only on YouTube. Uh, to finish out the night. YouTube exclusive. Gang gang. Exclusive. So, uh, so, <clears throat> so go ahead, Dice Daddy. So, so Thok, uh, Dremel had just woken you up from your watch as you had approached Adam, who kind of was eyeing you up and down. He mentioned that uh, wasn't quite sure why you needed to be alive as compared to the other ones. And he said he would stay up another hour with you. As the two of you kind of sit across from each other. Um, so, just out of curiosity, since everybody else in the front of the caravan got to figure out what's on that little sheet of paper about them, what's it say about me? Oh. You want to know what your rep sheet is? Yeah, why not? Well... From what I gathered, I mean, pretty notorious pirate at this point. Built up a name for yourself in the past, what, six, seven years or so. Larceny, theft, I mean, perjury, things of that nature. I mean, but people have done worse. Like, Oh, definitely. Murder. I've definitely done worse. You know, like threatening to murder 20 some odd children, stuff like that. I've implied. <clears throat> mm hmm. Right. And you and Ruby kind of, you know, I don't want to assume. Like, no, I mean, you can assume why. Strictly professional. Gotcha. I've known Ruby for 20 years. Oh, wow. She looks good for her age. Yeah. And you know what? In all those 20 years, I've never seen her without the helmet. Really? No bullshit. So how do you know it's Ruby, then? You just know. How do you not know it's not like Ralph? Well, she talks to me. 
People have abilities to change their voices. Not around us. Why not? Don't really like using magic much, unless necessary. <clears throat> I mean, sometimes it is necessary to help others. Well, it's not really my say in the ethics and non-ethics of magic. Not really a wizard or a sorcerer or any of that. Not an adventurer. My bounty hunter. So you just do what you're told and get paid for it. No, it wasn't always like that. No? What was it like yeah. before? Seven or six years ago, I mean, the guild, we would find different bounties. I mean, I've went across the, the fucking plains. I've been to Valoria, Pharos, Jade Abyss a few times. Mm. Here and there. I mean, Foaming Waters, Yetvin, Vestergaard, Green Coast Peas. Like, mate, I mean, I used to just go to different message boards and just find different bounties. It was fun. <coughs> Not to say this isn't fun, of course, but now it's more straightforward. You know, I've been given a direction for my hand. <laughs> Even if it is the wrong direction. I wouldn't say it's the wrong direction, mate. You're for a future, dis. You broke out of a prison. I mean, I was wrongfully accused in the first place. Saw the rap sheet. Look, there are, is good and bad in everyone. And right and wrong. What you decide to do with the choices you're given, that determines the kind of person you are. I know the kind of person I am. And I know that the things that I have done may not have been, as one may say, lawful. But they were for the better of humanity. So, better of humanity. Look okay. out. When you watch an entire town starve and be taxed over and over again by a tyrant who just sits happily in his castle just gorging himself instead of watching for the betterment of his townsfolk. How's that right? Just because he was born to the right family? What well, gives him that right? I don't know about all that. <clears throat> From what it sounds like on a very simplistic approach is there was someone that did something wrong that you found just or outside of the law that you had decided to step into and correct, right? Hypothetically. Hypothetically. So who's in the wrong? The person that lets his entire town starve? Let's kids die in gutters because they have no, nothing to eat. Or the person that helps that town. Gives the people food. Gives them something to hope for. Before I go, because I'm quite tired. Let me pose you a different question. And you tell me. It doesn't have to be now. Just think about it. Someone blows up a barn and kills someone. Someone kills six people. And 140 people go missing. And they escape prison. You see him and he gets up and he goes, what's to stop those people from doing it again, right? Puts on the hat, bill of smoke, 
and he goes over to uh, <clears throat> excuse me to Ruby, and you see him, and he kind of taps her gently on the head, and she kind of looks over, points over, and they switch places, and he kind of just puts the hat down, cross the arms, as she approaches and kind of sits <coughs> cross-legged. As this happened, Manu is next to you, and he goes, "What? What was he talking about?" I don't knowing that Ruby's there. I don't say anything out loud. But Ruby's I not. Struggles. I would say Ruby's not there yet. Oh, I would okay. say Manu is there as he's going to go get her. Got it. Um, that is a very good question. I'm assuming it's like myself. Other people in our party like to keep their past there, just in the past. Yeah, but. I mean, seven months, six months, four months. It's not too far in the past, right? No. But I'll ask. <coughs> I'll ask. Figure out what that was about. You see him and he kind of just puts his hands, like his, his arms on his knees, and he kind of just looks forward. As Ruby kind of comes off, the, the campfire is kind of reflecting off the uh, the helmet as she kind of sits down and puts her, her hands kind of uh, in her lap, and she kind of just tilts her head. So, Ruby, is, is, do you have a last name? Just Ruby? Kind of like Cher. quiet hmm no any good jokes something is kill time any good games see the shoulders kind of go up as she breathes they go down you're definitely a talker great I love sharing conversations with other people that don't talk back this is fun. The head. It's a gorgeous helmet. Where'd you get it? That's that's very interesting. Lord Alder, where the hell are you? <laughs> so, about thirty minutes kind of pass. You were with Adam for an additional thirty as Alder kind of comes out. <clears throat> and Alder, you see Thaw kind of trying to reach an olive branch out to this helmeted person helmet. covered it's in just a helmet. their cloak. It's just a helmet just floating in like a cloth <laughs> dome uh, as you kind of sit next to, to Thawk. <clears throat> and Ruby just kind of sits there and she takes notice of you. You kind of see the, the helmet kind of look at you and track you as you sit down. She tells the best jokes, by the way. Oh, for real? Yeah, like she, she, she's, she's hilarious. Oh, okay. I could go for a good laugh, Ruby. Let her rip. <laughs> Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> hey, had to make, had to laugh somehow. That was a joke. That was a joke right there. Yeah. Well. Is it is it time for me to sleep? Like, you can if you want to. I can handle the rest. Get yourself a couple more hours under your belt. Well, no. Like, if it hasn't been two hours, then I'm staying up with you. I mean, I'm not sure. Don or Dremel never woke me up, so I uh, don't know how long you've been out here. Would I be able to tell, like, how long I've been out here? You've been out there for about an hour. All right. Well, like, meh. Still got an hour left. I'll just go to bed whenever. In about an hour. And then I can leave you and Ruby to it. Sounds good to me. So, where's Aya? She's in my tent. Where? In her cage. 
see the head, the helmet kind of tilt. People don't deserve to be caged. You know that. Mm-hmm. No, I. I know. Even more so, animals don't deserve to be caged. That's what I meant to say. But whatever. Here we are. What is a bird gonna do? Like, why don't they just let her go? She's a bird. I mean, why'd they have to go ahead and say that they put explosives on her cage that if I tried to pick the lock, it would blow up a cart full of kids? I have many questions. Regardless, mm. I don't think I'm going to like the answers. Yep, so much for being the good guys, you know, threatening a cart full of kids blow, to blow them up. However, arresting someone for doing what they thought was right was wrong that's how I ended up in this entire mess so or time to be alive um alright well if you think I can handle it then I'll uh I think I'll go to bed I didn't sleep well last night so I think this will help go for it get some sleep I got it thanks Alder and I'll Tap him in the back, and when I tap him in the back, just for the hell of it, I'm going to cast Death Ward on him. Okay. And then go to my tent. Are you trying to be sneaky about it, or you're just... Yes. Go ahead and roll stuff. She can't see past the helmet. You're fine. (laughs) Sure. Uh, eh, 15... Okay. She kind of looks at you as you you walk off. You get to your tent, and Manu is kind of just sitting. Like, he's disappeared when Alder got there, but he's already sitting next to where your bedroll kind of is on the tent, and he's just kind of bearing a hole into the uh, dirt as he's concentrating. And he goes, I don't get it. You don't get what? What are you staring at? No, just this whole situation. They're playing mind games, but not like the kind of mind games it felt like I was doing. You know? No. Like, what do you mean? Like, they're trying to get inside our heads, or? I don't know. I was trying to convince you. I was, I was genuine. Adam seems genuine as well, but you're right. He seems overconfident. I don't know. Try to get some sleep. I mean, that's kind of difficult. When I know that you're just going to be sitting out here staring at me the entire time. Why would I be staring at you? Please go to bed. (laughs) Well, you can't take a joke. We're not good at them, Garrosh. Hey, I think I'm funny. Someone has to. By he's the way, but he's just fucking. Did, did your horse have a name? I feel kind of bad just riding him and naming him on my own, and I don't know if you're coming back or. He's kind of on loan, right? You see him shrug and he goes, call him whatever you want. Sure. I don't want to, like, disrespect him. Like, He's a good horse. He's a very good horse. Tell you what. When you come back, he's all yours again. I'll take care of him. You see him and he goes, I appreciate that. That's not out of guilt, is it? Good night, Manu. And I'll turn over to go to sleep. Good night, Garrosh. So, Alder, <clears throat> as you're kind of sitting with this chrome golden helmet, this kind of cape encapsulating her form, she's just kind of like tilting, 
When you kind of shift, she kind of shifts. To, uh... You got a, a face under that helmet? To, uh... Do you want me to? Do you do you want to take it off to like you know I don't know breathe normal for like a second? And you hear a like a scoff behind the helmet. I mean I'll close my eyes. So as you close your eyes, you kind of hear some rustling, and as you kind of open, you see that the cloak is off. That there is this very leathered kind of red and goldish kind of to go with the helmet bodysuit almost there are a couple of things on her hips and um things attached to her boots and her thighs and her wrists as she kind of sits there and you see her and she puts her hand to the side of the helmet and you see the visor kind of go up and you see that there's this kind of pale human skin behind uh, the visor these kind of blondish curls coming out of different ports of the visor and these kind of bluish green eyes that kind of look at you. It's at least a little bit nicer, huh? Looks down, looks back at you. It's fine. Oh. Words. What makes me so lucky? Wanted to make sure that I could see everything. Good to know. Well, I mean, can understand that. I mean, I just found out that my bird was locked in a cage and that you want to kill me, so I'm having a hell of a day. Well, I don't want to kill you, but I have a job. Don't have to die. Yeah, well, if you have a job, then you should know that my job was doing honest work and I got in trouble for it. So, you'd think in your line of business you would maybe have a little bit of respect for people who are trying to just do the same? I use the law to my advantage. I don't go willy-nilly. Yeah, me neither. Except for the one time that things got sideways. And here we are. I got you arrested. Bingo. So, you guys seem to have a good amount of information about all of us. What do you know about me? Well, from what I read on the file big chip on your shoulder you haven't been home in quite some time the one that Adam was talking about the city of Iron don't know why your family seems nice very welcoming town is advancing They're creating a lot of very interesting things. Things that eventually, if I could procure the coin, of course, would want to buy. They seem unfazed by you being gone. But not the way a a parent who doesn't want their child, but in a way of apathy. Well, in that case, that kind of should tell you almost everything that you need to know about why I haven't been home in a while. Well, we all want to rebel and do our own thing, right? Well, we don't necessarily see eye to eye, and it just was best, I think, for me to go my own way. So that way our relationship 
remains appreciative of one another and rather spiteful towards one another. I see. What about you? What's your story? I don't have papers, so... I'm just a humble bounty hunter. Trying to make money. Working for my guilt. They would never write a manuscript about that. I don't need a manuscript. You know, there's got to be something, like a little bit of flair, something crazy that you did that got you into this kind of field. I have a, a name, a reputation. Yeah. Ruby is not my real name, but it's been so long since I've used that name that Ruby is all I am. Well, as I'm sure you know, Lyndon's not my real surname, so... That's not... She kind of eyes you and she goes, I was known as the Ruby Basilisk for the past 20 years. I've been doing this for a while. So why do they call you the Ruby Basilisk? Long story. I mean, we got at least an hour and a half until everybody wakes up. She looks around and she goes, maybe for another time. Well, if we don't all kill each other, it sounds like we'll be following you guys for at least four weeks till we get back to the prison. So I guess there will be plenty of time then. I guess so. She kind of leans back and you see her kind of cross her arms. So she looks down at the fire. Like the, the light is kind of glinting and it's really showing the different kind of aspects of the greens and the, the blues in her eyes and the slight copper that she has flecked in there. Almost like someone with a paintbrush just kind of flicked. <sighs> and during this conversation, she's made direct eye contact with me, correct? She has several times. Well, in that case, I'll just come and say a yeah, very pretty eyes. And you see her and she looks back up at you and you kind of see the, the sides of the eyes kind of wrinkle a little bit as you can identify it as a smirk or a smile. And she goes, thank you. You're welcome. Since you don't want to tell me your story, if there's anything else you want to know, feel free to ask. But if not, I'm just going to play with the fire a little bit. And then I'll just be casting Druidcraft to manipulate it here and there. And she watches you as the two of you sit in silence for the rest of your watch. And we'll end it there. Ooh-wee. <sighs> Ooh-wee. How about them apples? It is Lord. about to get potentially dirty. Well, thanks for anyone who's watching this on YouTube for catching the last 25 minutes of it. Uh, so, sorry about the internet issues. Not sure what happened. Everything just kind of... Damn Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> the entire state. So All dumb. It. It's on lockdown. <laughs> yeah, I'm still on lockdown. Blame Google. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please do those things. Let us know your favorite part of the episode. Who's your favorite character thus far? Any of that good stuff. And, as long uh, as it's not Adam. As long fuck you if it's Adam. I love it. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Still going to shout out because I still have them up. Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat. A big thank you to another TV viewer, Atten, Commander Root, Inventkin, Lurks, and uh, our two new subs, Grizzly Grizzly and Gandalf the Babe. We love you all. Bye. And fuck you, Donovan. And fuck you, Donovan. Good shit. <laughs>